In the second hour, we've got Mike Cernovich coming on to talk about the drama in the alt-right movement. We had The Atlantic basically go to a neo-Nazi conference last weekend. They threw up Sig Heil hand salutes. And basically now the alt-right is neo-Nazis. They've completely demonized it. Will this split up the alt-right? You can see the video there. We're going to play it again in full later. Will this split the alt-right? Will this end the alt-right? Is this a huge victory for the mainstream media, for fake news? Or can we recover from this? Can we delineate what represents the true alt-right, the true Trump movement, given that Donald Trump has now disavowed at least this individual group? We're going to talk about that with Mike Cernovich. Alex Jones will be joining us provisionally at the bottom of the hour. He's got a lot of things to discuss. Of course, they're talking about Mitt Romney still being Secretary of State. This is floating around. We had Kellyanne Conway kind of disavow that yesterday, suggesting that it wouldn't happen. But it's still floating around there. Some people on the Trump train say they're going to get off if Mitt Romney is announced as Secretary of State not because of his insults, because he insulted Donald Trump on the campaign trail, but because of his record, because of the fact that he basically led the Never Trump movement. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to get into the Washington Post has come out once again and said that Infowars is fake news. But not only that, they're now saying that all these fake news websites, including Infowars, including Zero Hedge, including Breitbart, are all run from the Kremlin and that the entire fake news scandal is a contrivance of the Russian government. Massive Washington Post article. We're going to completely eviscerate it here in the first hour. But first, this is the crucial news. And it's kind of interesting because a lot of Trump supporters are very laid back over this. They don't really see it as a problem. They see it as theater. And that is Jill Stein of the Green Party has basically raised the money at this point. She's announced, in fact, AP just reported Jill Stein will request recount in Wisconsin. A local party official says the Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein will request a recount in Wisconsin. Basically, in little over 40 hours, in fact, little over 24 hours, they raised an amount over $4.8 million to have a recount in Wisconsin. And it looks like a recount in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Of course, you will notice that those three states are the three states which Trump won narrowly. Isn't it interesting that in the interest of having a fair and ethical vote, they're only doing a vote recount in states that Trump won? Even though Hillary won in states such as New Hampshire, Nevada, with far narrower, narrower margins than Trump won in Pennsylvania. Yeah, out of these three states where they're doing the recount, and it looks like they're going to raise enough money to do so, they're all states in which Trump narrowly won. Of course, this is off the back of a meeting between computer scientists and the Clinton campaign last week where they're trying to get them to call officially from the Clinton campaign for a recount. And then lo and behold, Jill Stein emerges out of nowhere and says, oh, by the way, we want a recount. What's going on here? There's certain people who are very, very concerned about this. They point to the bizarre methods in which the money's being raised. It seems to be added on in a uniform bot-like fashion. Again, she raised over $3 million for her entire campaign. Months and months of campaign financing only amounted to $3 million. Yet she was able to raise over $4.8 million in little over 24 hours. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of respected people, people like Bill Mitchell have said that this is just theater. It's nothing to worry about. I think it is something to worry about. Given what we saw with Brexit, they immediately tried to steal this from us. Are they going to try and steal it from Trump? We'll be back on The Alex Jones Show after the break. Infowars.com. We'll be right back. We are live. This is The Alex Jones Show, Friday, November 25th. Alex Jones will be coming up at the bottom of the hour. But just to set the table here, we're going to get onto this article, which is up on Infowars.com. Is Jill Stein's recount an attempt to steal the election from Hillary? As I said before the break, some of the same Trump supporters who were very concerned about vote fraud before the election are surprisingly relaxed about this new recount in Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania set to take place over the next week. 
In fact, AP reports that they are set to file before today's 5 p.m. deadline in Wisconsin for a recount of the vote. And again, people seem very lackadaisical about it. I mean, if they could rig the election, how couldn't they rig this recount? I mean, given the fact that the Clinton campaign has met personally with these computer scientists who claim that there are anomalies in the way the, vo the votes were counted, in the way they were tallied by electronic voting machines. Of course, small problem with that in Michigan, they don't use electronic voting machines. And Jill Stein can't seem to answer that. She can't seem to answer the question, which I've put to her several times now, as to why these recounts are only taking place in states that Trump won. Let's go to my video, which went up last night. This is about Jill Stein's recount. Let's roll that video. So the temper tantrums failed, the rioting and smashing up cities failed, and sending death threats to electors failed. Now Hillary supporters, encouraged by Jill Stein's fundraising campaign, are demanding a recount in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. They spent months sniping about how evil and dangerous Trump was for saying he might not immediately accept the election results. He refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. Now, make no mistake, by doing that, he is threatening our democracy. And the peaceful transition, the peaceful transition of power is one of the things that sets us apart. It's how we hold our country together, no matter who's in charge. Now, they're refusing to accept the election results. Donald Trump refused to say that he'd respect the results of this election. That's a direct threat to our democracy. So by Hillary's own logic, her supporters, along with Jill Stein, are now a direct threat to democracy. So when the right talks about vote fraud, it's a direct threat to democracy. But when the left does it, it's ethical. But Hillary won the popular vote. What are you afraid of? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that she's a lying, corrupt sociopath. Maybe the fact that her entire campaign was backed by an establishment that wouldn't hesitate to exploit a recount to carry out the vote fraud that they thought they didn't need on election day. The Clinton campaign has already held meetings with computer scientists who claim that there are anomalies between votes cast on electronic voting machines and those cast by paper ballots. Yeah, one problem with that, Michigan didn't even use electronic voting machines. And as Nate Silver, hardly a Trump supporter, has documented, these so-called anomalies completely disappear when you factor in demographics. This whole thing was already debunked before it even began. Is Hillary Clinton willing to risk civil war in America by installing herself as part of a coup? Now, this is all a long shot, but it just goes to illustrate how the left only professes its love for democracy when they're winning. As soon as they start losing, they have a hissy fit of epic proportions. We saw the exact same thing after Brexit, and they're still trying to derail that, pissing all over the democratic will of the British people. Jill Stein also keeps raising the amount they're asking for to fund this recount every time it's met. Could this just be one huge money-making scam? And why is Jill Stein pushing this? Is it to try and regain some lefty street cred because she was vaguely supportive of Trump during the campaign? If so, that's pathetic. Seriously, Jill Stein said that a Hillary presidency would mean nuclear war. And now she's throwing Hillary a lifeline. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly. The deadline for demanding a recount in these three states is almost up. The Wisconsin deadline is tomorrow. In Pennsylvania, it's Monday and Michigan is Wednesday next week. If they extend those deadlines to cater for this campaign, then you know the fix is in. So listen up, crybaby butthurt losers. No matter how many times you recount the votes, Hillary will still have lost. No matter how many death threats you send to electors, Hillary will still have lost. No matter how many boo-hoo whining temper tantrums you have, Hillary will still have lost no matter how many cities you smash up hillary will still have lost you lost your entire ideology has been rejected go home lick your wounds and listen to people like bernie sanders who explained why you lost because no one resonates with you constantly shoving identity politics down people's throats it doesn't work anymore your era is finished it's done 
Now wipe the blubbering tears from your face, step aside, and let the adults get on with making America great again. Okay, that video went up last night. Here is the latest at the Associated Press. Jill Stein will request recount in Wisconsin. Green Party says the article states under Wisconsin law, Stein's campaign must show a basis for the recount in that state and cover costs. So they need to show a basis for the recount, yet they haven't shown any basis whatsoever. Is the vote tight? Was it tight in Wisconsin? Yes, but it was tight in Nevada. It was tight in New Hampshire. It was tight in other states. Yet there's no recount taking place in states where Hillary won. This is what Jill Stein said to PBS yesterday. Quote, this is not being done to benefit one candidate at the expense of the other. So if that's the case, Jill, why are you only fundraising to conduct recounts in states where Trump won? How many times do we need to ask that question? Haven't received an answer thus far. Hillary won New Hampshire, Minnesota, and Nevada by fewer votes than Trump won Pennsylvania, but there will be no recount in any of those three states. Why is it only happening in the states that Trump won? So Trump won Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes. And that's what Jill Stein aims to have a recount. She aims to have a recount in Pennsylvania. Their deadline is tomorrow. The Wisconsin deadline is today. Michigan deadline is Wednesday. In all of those three states, they want a recount. So Trump beat Hillary by 78,000 votes in Pennsylvania. Yet Clinton only won New Hampshire by less than 3,000 votes. She won Minnesota by less than 44,000 votes and Nevada by around 26,000 votes. So in all three cases, in all three states where she narrowly defeated Trump, she won by a significantly smaller margin than what Trump had over Hillary in Pennsylvania. So why are we having a recount in Pennsylvania when these three blue states were significantly tighter on election night. And why hasn't Jill Stein answered that question? Again, this happened. This didn't just emerge out of the blue independently via Jill Stein. This happened after these computer scientists met with Hillary Clinton's campaign. They had a conference call with spirit cooking spooky Podesta a week ago. This is where this started. So now they're trying to claim that it's all Jill Stein's work. Again, is that to, to contain the backlash? Is that to prevent charges that by leading this recount initiative, Hillary would be a sore loser? Jill Stein seems to have taken it on. And again, they're talking about evidence that the vote was hacked in these three states. How can a vote be hacked in Michigan when it wasn't conducted on electronic voting machines? This is the quote from Chris Thomas. Listen to this. He's the director of Michigan's Bureau of Elections. He told the Detroit Free Press, we are an entire paper and optical scan state. So the only electronic version of this vote is where you fill in the paper ballot and then have it scanned by an optical scanner. There's no electronic voting machine. They didn't use any in the presidential election in Michigan. He went on to say, quote, nothing is connected to the Internet. So again, the claim that this could have been hacked, completely debunked on the face of it. And on top of that, they already counted the vote twice in Michigan. And when I put this out on Twitter last night, there were a few leftists, a few Hillary supporters like, no, that's not true. Well, yes, it is. They had the quick count, which was conducted on the night of the election, announced on the morning of the 9th. They then had a second certified count, which was conducted they only just released the final results of that yesterday, and Trump won by 10,700 votes. So they already had two counts in Michigan. If they have a third count, given that this is a state which does not use electronic voting machines, if they have a third count, oh, and lo and behold, we've just discovered all these new paper ballots in the name of Hillary. I mean, that is going to stink to high heaven. And again, it's only happening in states that Trump won. You've also got Again, the fact that Trump supporters seem very, very lackadaisical about this. They don't seem to really think that this is a threat. All the top Trump people on, on Twitter that I've looked at aren't very concerned about this. Over at the Donald Reddit, they are more concerned about it. 
And questions are also swirling as to how Stein managed to raise such a whopping sum of money, which is now $4.8 million in such a short space of time, given that her entire campaign only raised $3 million. Obviously, you've got a lot of butthurt Hillary supporters that are donating to that. But again, $4.8 million in a little over 24 hours. I mean, do we have George Soros's hand involved in this? Do we have big Hillary donors involved in this? And again, using Jill Stein as a fallback to take the flak. But in fact, they had other experts analyze the claims made by the computer scientists who claimed that there were anomalies between the electronic voting machine ballots and the paper ballots. And even they said that there was no evidence here. So again, Wisconsin law states there needs to be evidence, not just funding, not just you prove you can pay for a recount. You need to have actual evidence that there was fraud. They have none. We'll be back to discuss it after this break. Don't go away. We are back live on the Alex Jones Show. Alex Jones will be coming up with his take on this recount, which people seem to be very relaxed about. I doubt Alex is relaxed about it, and rightly so. I'm certainly not either. But before we get back into the news, I want to tell you about our specials at InfoWarsStore.com because we've got an amazing discount right now. Silver Bullet, colloidal silver at just $9.95. This price will only be held for the next 24 hours. That's $9.95 for Silver Bullet, colloidal silver. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is finally here following Alex's extensive search for a powerful colloidal silver product that is free of artificial additives. No crap in this. We try to get the purest solutions possible and utilize as high quality processes to ensure for a truly unique product that has applications for both preparedness and regular use. Again, 737 reviews, independent reviews, 4.8 out of 5. I mean, that is huge. Seven, if you went on Amazon.com and you saw 4.8 out of 737 independent reviews, that is high praise indeed. And it's only $9.95. That is huge. Normally retails for $29.95. So you've got a $20 saving on Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver right now at InfoWarsStore.com. We've also got BrainForce Plus, which I need to get my hands on. And again, I took, I used to take uh, Joe Rogan's product, which was similar, but this is even better. And I'm guessing that brain force is even a, a, a boost on top of that. In fact, I took two of these right before the show. I've got it right here. This is the ordinary brain force that we had before. Now we've got brain force plus. And again, this enhances cognitive thinking. This enables you to get tasks done quicker. If you're a public speaker, it enables you to speak more clearly. Again, you could use this even in social situations. People go out, they have brain fog, they've got people talking at them from all different directions. This really clears up your mind, enables you to speak more clearly. Again, it's Brain Force Plus 2096. Again, huge savings, 1899 savings. That's a, over 47% saving. That is extremely reasonable. In fact, other products, similar products, which aren't even as good, I've seen them go for as much as double what we're offering BrainForce Plus for at InfoWarsStore.com. So again, it's not just about getting great products that have independent five-star reviews, replete with hundreds of them. It's about supporting this broadcast. You've seen how it's grown so quickly. You've seen how we're now taking on the mainstream media and winning, which is now why they say we're fake news, which we're going to get onto in a moment. But support us, get the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, before we get on to fake news here in the last couple of minutes, we have the Daily Mail reporting Trump transition aides Mull asking Mitt Romney to issue public apology for calling Trump phony and fraud so he can be Secretary of State. This has obviously caused a huge uproar amongst Trump supporters in the last couple of days. Never Romney was trending on Twitter a couple of days ago, people don't want Mitt Romney as Secretary of State. They don't want him anywhere near a Trump administration. In fact, Cernovich, who's coming up in the next hour, he said that it was basically his line in the sand. He said that if Trump appointed Mitt Romney as Secretary of State, he would have to get off the Trump train. Others are saying that that's drama queen behavior. That's going over the top. But again, the narrative here is that, oh, 
you know, we can't have Mitt Romney because he insulted Donald Trump during the campaign. No, it's not about that. Nobody cares about insults. You know, Ben Carson insulted Trump. Trump insulted a lot of other people who are going to end up in his cabinet. Nobody cares about that. Mitt Romney basically led the Never Trump movement. This is a corrupt, compromised establishment insider who has nothing whatsoever to do with the Trump movement and shouldn't be anywhere near it. This is a guy who vehemently, even more so than Hillary Clinton, wanted to arm jihadist rebels in Syria as far back as 2011. And look at what happened. Look how great that ended up. This is a guy who was pushed basically for a confrontation with Russia. If this guy gets in, this would push us back towards a war with Russia. It would be like Hillary Clinton won the election. And again, he led the Never Trump movement. They almost tried to insert him in the final few months as a ringer to try and derail Trump at the RNC. I mean, Trump won based largely on backlash to Obamacare. Obamacare was based on Romney care. In fact, Mitt Romney himself said, without Romney care, there would be no Obamacare. So again, he's a neocon. He supported the same disastrous policies in the Middle East as, as Hillary Clinton did. He basically led, was the figurehead of the Never Trump movement. Nobody cares about insults. We care about policies. We care about history. We care about legacy. And that's why Mitt Romney should be nowhere near a Trump administration. We'll be back with Alex Jones after the break. Don't go away. And we are back live as negotiations continue over Donald Trump's Secretary of State. They're now saying that it could be Petraeus, of course, a massive, massive backlash against Mitt Romney. It looked like he could be a shoe in Obviously, we know he had that meeting with Trump. But again, Trump's base basically had a fit, revolted against it. A lot of people now saying they're going to jump off the Trump train if he gets Mitt Romney as his Secretary of State. Others are saying that that's an overreaction. We wait and see. We're going to get Alex Jones' comments on that, as well as Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate, now announcing, as of about 30 minutes ago, that she will file for the recount in Wisconsin. It's a 5 p.m. deadline. They're going to file for that recount. It's already funded, and they're well on the way to funding recounts in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Not so interested in having recounts in any of the blue states that Hillary won in even tighter numbers. A lot of concern over this, but also a lot of Trump people saying that it's nothing to worry about. Alex Jones, do we have Alex? Yes, Paul, I'm here. Alex, are you concerned about the recount? Because I've seen a lot of Trump supporters are saying this is just theater, it's not gonna have any impact. If they were so concerned about vote fraud before the election, why shouldn't we be concerned about fraud in a recount? Well, that's why I join you today, Paul, uh, several huge issues to go over. Bev Harris, who, again, is a big Democrat, a big liberal, who exposed the fraud against Al Gore in 2000. I covered it. Clearly, the fraud was against Gore. I hate Gore, uh, but I went with the facts at the time because that was the facts. She is the most highly respected election fraud expert out there. Most of her team are Democrats. We've had a lot of them on computer scientists, you name it, who have discovered how the systematic fraud is happening with the fraction uh, carving, the fraction magic. We had her on the week before the election. We had her on the day after. And she said clearly, uh, in, in a whole bunch of states, but clearly in five states that went for Hillary, they had some precincts with 100% or more of the voters turning out. Well, national turnout was 65%. That's impossible. And in some precincts, Hillary was getting 100% of the 100%, and in other cases, she was getting 100% of all the final votes. So they were stuffing at the end what they needed, and the tsunami of Donald Trump was so gargantuan. She'd have crowds of 300 on average. She'd have crowds of 25,000 on average. It was so gargantuan. She stole the nomination from Sanders, so so much of her base – turned away from her, that they did try to steal it. That's why she didn't come out and do a concession that night. It's why she reportedly attacked her staff, according to CNN and others, and, and uh, had to <clears throat> be restrained. All of this was going on. So they were like deer in the headlights. They'd already printed up Newsweek that she was Madam President. This was already a done deal. So absolutely, Jill Stein, 
knew that there was massive backlash against Hillary by Bernie people, so she courted them and made some good points like, hey, if you don't want nuclear war, if you're not going to vote for me, vote for Trump. But now that she's in there, she knows, now that she's lost, she knows that 100 percent of this money she's getting is from big Democratic Party donors, uh, upwards of seven million. It was five million yesterday. Seven million has flooded in to do the recount. They're they're filing today, as you said, pretty much as we speak. And then the key, we have bigger anonym, uh, bigger anomalies, as you just pointed out, taking place in all of these blue states where Hillary in the polls was really going to uh, lose. Then magically, there's all of this uh, you know, classic uh, skewing of the vote, all of it in Bev Harris's words against Trump, all of it going against Trump, all of the anomalies against Trump in at least five states that Hillary Clinton clearly stole. Uh, so uh, the, the unfortunate part of this is the media has gone along with the fact that Trump's the winner while playing possum, while Soros has funded all these we're not accepting him as the president movements, while they've tried to unseat him in the Electoral College. Because this is their uh, second sneak attack, basically, uh, that we've witnessed here. First, they tried to steal uh, the situation with the superdelegates. Uh, then they tried to obviously unseat him at the RNC. Uh, then they tried to steal it from him on election night, and now they've done it again. So that's four times total in this election of the last year and twice since election night, election night, and now, now. So all of it's one-sided. All of it is against Trump. The top expert says it's against Trump. She clearly stole five states, and then it gets worse. She, on record, had three million illegals or non-citizens that voted. That's major studies. Anybody can Google it. They're, they're not uh, denying it. Then at least four to five million people that were on the death rolls ended up voting. Then they caught people in Colorado, California. Ohio, Florida, uh, Vermont, New York, voting repeatedly, oh, against who? Donald Trump for Hillary. All the fraud, everybody they capture, everybody they catch, everybody they arrest, everybody who gets caught red-handed was being given lists by the Democratic Party of dead people out of the obituaries that linked up with their list of people on the voter rolls, and they got caught. But then it gets worse. We have Project Veritas, not one, not two, but three videos. Kramer, the head of the national movement, his number two guy. And then the head of New York elections admitting that the Democrats are engaged in massive organized uh, fraud, organizing voter fraud via election fraud. So all of this is there. All of this is crystal clear, and I think it's a real threat. I've told folks the battle has just begun. I've had a bad feeling this whole time. They are going after Trump, and basically the Republican Party now has him encircled saying, listen, you play ball with us, or we're not going to let you use the supermajority to get your agenda done, which includes – you know." Uh, Controlling our borders, ending NAFTA, ending GATT, ending TPP, ending the carbon taxes that will really set this country free, cutting taxes on poor people. The list goes on and on. 900 plus seats uh, in state houses. What was it? 16 seats in the Senate, 30 something in the House. Uh, this it was a gigantic victory, a huge tsunami. And so, as you pointed out, the Soros line is. Donald Trump has betrayed us. Donald Trump has betrayed us when he hasn't done any such thing yet so that we pull our support from him as his base. He'll then be forced to fall into the control of the neocons and the mainline Republicans who will be his only supporters. If we stay behind him and wait and see what he actually does via policy once he gets in, then he'll be able to take control of that trifecta, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial, and ram our agenda through. But we cannot sit there and, and, and freak out on Trump until that happens. Now, I personally agree with David Knight, who put out a video saying this pick for Secretary of Education has promoted Common Core. She better come out and give a speech saying she's on board with Trump now and is, just, and is going to follow his policies, just like Pence did when he first got uh, you know, chosen as his VP. I am concerned, obviously, about Mitt Romney because he said that Trump's a con man and a criminal and, and, and will try to backstab him. But if Trump decides to do that, that's his issue as long as he delivers. But I'll tell you, a Petraeus isn't perfect, but he got burned by the CIA when he became their director for actually trying to clean it up. And I have that from insiders. So Petraeus is better. Look, all these people that know how the government works are from the establishment. And Trump's already brought in a lot of outsiders, uh, like Stephen Bannon and others. Uh, but, but what I care about is delivery. And look, stock market's already up. He's exposing political correctness. He says he's going to go after 
NAFTA and GATT and TPP's dead day one and the, and the carbon taxes. So I'm very, very happy at this point. They're putting out the bids to build the wall. Paul Watson, what do you think? Well, what I see, Alex, is people like Michael Moore, people like the Soros groups, people like Media Matters, they're all completely in a panic about what Trump is going to do in just his first few days. They see this onslaught of new bills in just the first few days of a Trump presidency. That's why they're still out today. And Michael Moore was on it was MSNBC yesterday. He said saying, we must not allow him to take office. Exactly. So if our yeah. enemies are panicking hysterically to keep him out, what does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? So let me ask you this, Paul. What do you think of the information I have? But obviously he's being advised uh, by uh, his chief of staff, uh, Priebus. He's being advised, obviously, by his son-in-law, who I think is a good guy overall, and others. That the smart move to do is to basically, like old empires would do, old royalty, if you'd had a war, two kings, you'd marry your daughter off to the other king you just beat so he wouldn't be butthurt. You merge the power. But here's the deal. Trump's done that in business, and I understand his smarts. This isn't business. This is cutthroat globalist politics. He lets weasels in the hen house. They're going to try to assassinate him. No, I mean, that's the point. He would argue that he's going to try and keep his enemies closer. But you could see, just with the reaction on Twitter, an absolute deluge of opposition. Never Romney was trending. That's when Kellyanne Conway had to come out and basically disavow, to some extent, the fact that the Romney was a done deal as Secretary of State. But the, the major point is, they still think they've got a chance of keeping Trump out of the presidency. This is not a done deal until January. And we I saw totally it agree. I, uh, the Electoral College doesn't happen until, what, December 20th? And then we've got all the way up until the 18th to 19th uh, with his inauguration. And, and, Paul, this is key what you just said. Trump needs to know that just because they've seated him as 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 president-elect, just because uh, the people are behind him, the globalists are absolutely criminal. And ladies and gentlemen, they're at least going to try to cripple him politically and bring out a bunch of evidence that the Russians or the Easter bunnies or somebody else uh, hacked in these hacked in these uh, crossover states like Pennsylvania and Ohio and uh, Wisconsin and, and Michigan. Notice they're going after all the places that had very, very narrow victories. But as you pointed out, Hillary won in the other states where we know she stole it by even smaller margins. Jill Stein is caught 110% red freaking handed, ladies and gentlemen, that she's only doing recounts in states to overturn Trump. This is outrageous. I say the whole thing's a fraud. The whole thing is illegitimate. I say you can't have recounts unless the other states that were in question get recounted as well. This is absolutely ridiculous. They're only recounting states to make up a bunch of evidence to try to then politically unseat Donald Trump. This is incredible. And now, Alex, people are calling for observers to be at the site of these recounts. And you know for sure that Clinton's people are going to be there. So why not? I think that's a great idea. But I mean, we're here five months now after Brexit. Brexit hasn't happened, okay? First, they said it was going to be March. Now they're saying that's not even going to happen where they trigger the initial thing where then it takes two years to have Brexit. So don't count your chickens before they've hatched. They tried to send death threats to electors across the country. That didn't work. They tried to have riots on the streets funded by George Soros. That didn't work. They're desperate. They're still out there every day saying we can still stop this. We can still stop this. And now this recount is happening, and everybody's laid back, and it's like, oh, this is just theater, this is not a big deal. They've already announced in Wisconsin it's going to happen, okay? They're going to have their people there. Top and Democrats, as you said, top Democrats, top Democratic donors did not just give seven mil in two days to Jill Stein to target only states that Trump narrowly won to play games, folks. They're not playing games. They mean business. Their plan is to then at least show that Trump supposedly stole these states and then have a bunch of Black Lives Matters people and communists activate and start burning stuff down. And I want to explain something. I've never seen communists in Ohio, in Texas, in California, in New York that I've witnessed with my own eyeballs this year come out of the woodwork like roaches when a house is burning down or rats. These people are marching up down the streets in Austin with guns saying we're going to kill cops, kill cops. Now, that is an armed group with guns saying kill people, and they are protected by the government. Ladies and gentlemen, if I march down the street with a firearm aimed at the ground un without one in the chamber, it is my right to exercise it to prove I have that right. But I'm not out there saying kill cops. And this is not some ass-kicking or ass-kissing, uh, 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 having a Freudian slip, 
comment to police. The police are good, they're bad, they're just normal people like us. But there are local governments that are ruling law. This is Soros and the globalists trying to openly overthrow our country. It is completely transparent. These people know they were about to bring the country down. They almost had us in the guillotine. They almost were going to have their Supreme Court justices. They almost had our guns. They almost had everything. And now they're turning their PSYOP up on turbo charge. That's why we've got to all be behind Donald Trump unless he deviates massively. And then even if that happens, Lord knows what's happening to his family. We have to understand the real globalist threat tried to keep him out. They're our enemies, and we've got to keep our eye on them. Now, down the road, Trump goes sideways. We'll keep him in line. Already he's backing away from Romney. That's a good thing. But that's the system pressuring him, saying, we'll protect you. Merge with us. You know, the, you're the president now. They're threatening to not give him the, the employees he needs. They're threatening for agencies to basically go on strike. I mean, uh, Trump is the man in the arena. And, Paul, I want to go back to what you, you were just saying. Ladies and gentlemen, they are activating their terror forces. They are activating their burn down the city's forces. They're activating the communists. These people wouldn't be hitting the streets after decades of being prepared behind the scenes if the New World Order wasn't seconds away from false flags, starting wars, you name it. Trump is 54 days from the presidency. We need to be praying for America, praying for the republic. I knew that once the election was over, I couldn't take a break or take a rest because this is a time of quickening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want to ask the crew this. Uh, do you guys have the video that's on InfoWars.com that I asked for earlier? Yes. Okay, it's up on InfoWars. Dot com. It is one of the most important videos that we have ever had, and I'll tell you right now, I've been thinking and praying about what's happening with Trump. I've been watching. I, I, I have seen what he's saying he's going to do, what he's preparing to do. That's all very, very positive. I give him a 97 on that. Who he's been appointing or who he's announcing for confirmation, I give him a 75. But the real test begins once he gets into office. Now, Last night, I don't normally talk like this, but it's the way I privately operate sometimes, I'm almost always completely decisive. My gut's never wrong, and my gut tells me Donald Trump is real, Donald Trump is amazing, Donald Trump is a patriot, but I, my gut was they're going to try to steal it. They did try to steal it, and my gut was it isn't over. They're going to pull something big, just what Paul just said. They are doing it now. I'm so excited I can hardly talk, and I prayed to God last night. And I, and I said, God, just show me a sign that Trump is, 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 is 100 percent. My gut, my spirit's telling me he is. Tell me what I do. Tell me what I say to the patriots then because you know, if I sit there and say stay by Trump when he's not perfect, they're going to think I've sold out. What do I do? Uh, you know, God, please give me the integrity to understand what to do to always be on the right side. And I – started thinking Trump is going to expose false flags. Trump is going to expose the, the criminals behind the government. Trump has Trump cards. Trump has Trump cards. And I'm laying there in bed at midnight, not able to sleep, and I just keep thinking Trump has Trump cards. I got up this morning. I got ready. I came in here. I've been up since you know, 6 a.m., made breakfast for the kids. I walked in here. We're going to skip this network break so we have more time, folks. And, I, and, I, and I'm about to get ready to come on 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before I come on with you. And I turned on InfoWars.com, and I hit refresh, and there was the video. There was the video. And I said, what on earth is this? I've never seen this. Watch this viral video of Trump on 9-11. Whoever posted this to InfoWars, great job uh, from our crew today. But uh, we need to really do another article on this, give it another headline. This is sensational. This is so key. And I don't want to get metaphysical here, folks, but God's real. Providence is real. I just kept thinking Trump is going to expose government-sponsored terror. He's going to expose the Saudis. His Trump card is false flags. He will expose the false flags, but he's got to get into office. Guess what I then saw, Paul, when I watched the video? I turned you down in the background. I was listening to you. It was like, it was like 11, uh, 10 Central. And guess what I watched in a three-minute video, Paul Watson? Well, it's the video up on InfoWars where Trump is talking about the planes hitting the World Trade Center, and he says basically there had to be bombs in there that were exploded at the same time because those steel beams, you would just not see what you saw on 9-11 with the planes going into the towers, and that's a video that I'd never seen before, and it's, it's amazing to see it now all these years later. Well, again, it tells you he wasn't on the inside of the New York scam. He wasn't on, side, uh, on the inside of the mafia scam was involved because within 30 minutes of it happening, they had – plain closed, obvious operatives wearing ball caps to cover their eyes, all over TV saying, oh, it fell because of a pancake effect and the fires weakened the steel, and then they'd walk off camera. They had staged 
interviews, which we've now proven they've done, with guys in baseball caps, clearly CIA or above CIA. The CIA, of course, was based in Building 7, the Solomon's Brother building. And, and, and I was li- this is another sign that Trump, this is so incredible, he explained, and I've studied the buildings, obviously, and had top engineers on, were the strongest in the world because they were the tallest at that time to be built, so they were scared, so they overbuilt them. He basically said the beams are so close together he's, you know, in the windows, they're like slits. He said, he said that it is the strongest buildings in the world and that it is impossible for it to fall from fire and that a plane wouldn't even be able to go through it without huge explosives in the plane and inside the building, which is what the firefighters said. It's what the engineers said. When he said that in, in, um, in 2001, Donald J. Trump had already built over 200 buildings, including some of them 60 and 70 stories. So he, he literally is an on-the-ground engineer, not just an economist. Building buildings with his dad since he was three years old, on the work sites, living on the work sites. That's why he's such a regular guy. That's why he's got street smarts as, uh, as well, all the fights and stuff he got in at the work sites as a kid. And his dad was a good dad and let him get beat up and stuff. That's all the inside baseball on Trump. And I'm like, my dad let me get beat up. People think that's abusive. It's actually a good thing. Make your kid tough. But the whole ball of wax, folks, is Donald J. Trump here, ladies and gentlemen, literally laying out basically it's an inside job. Day one, showing he wasn't part of it. And so much of New York was, and I've prayed about that. We've brought up the fact of what you know, happened in New York, but so many of the bigwigs were in on it, the stand down, the Saudis. That's why he went after the Saudis. It's why he threatened Jeb Bush with 9-11 truth. We got messages. I don't want to say too much this because the media will get, go crazy with it, but let's just say this. We were obviously exposing 9-11. Trump was exposing it at the same time. It really shook up the power structure. And let me tell you, Hillary was forced to stand down that night because of WikiLeaks. More pedophile stuff was going to come out. They were going to contest the election. She was stealing. Uh, they knew that it was a tsunami, so she was during the headlights and basically got sedated by her own people that understood it would bring down the whole Democratic Party uh, if the pedophilia came out. So the Democrats all know that this happened. They thought they'd coup America. They didn't. We won. We defeated their fraud. People inside who understand their whole system is going to come down and we mean business backed off because they know we're not backing off. But now the, 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 the criminals that weren't at the uh, uh, vortex of this have tried to reconstitute their operations to try to steal it again. And I will give you this warning, you bastards. You're not, you're no, you're not going to bankrupt our country. You're not going to leave the borders wide open. You're not going to sell us out of the Saudis and the communist Chinese. We're not going to have the communist Chinese telling us what to do. But but notice the communist Chinese were in the Wall Street Journal last week and the New York Times telling us you will shut down the alt media. You will control your people. I mean, folks, we are ganged up on by the communist Chinese, the Saudi Arabians, uh, the bunch of EU globalists, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and a bunch of scum. And Trump, by the way, is announcing for his Treasury Secretary and other folks a whole bunch of hardcore anti-NAFTA GATT independent billionaire Americans that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, they started announcing these guys. These are guys I happen to know from high-level folks behind the scenes that have been involved trying to finance the Liberty Movement. Boy, I wish they'd have sent me some money over the years. It's great to be the tip of the spear and get nothing. But the point is, and in fact, that was some positive stuff I wanted to get into. I'm brainstorming here. Some of these new appointments he's announcing in banking and things are hardcore uh, 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 anti globals Can you hear me, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. Good, good. I'm sorry, but my, my, my phone was uh, cutting out. But uh, look, I know I'm ranting here, folks. It's because this is history happening. I'm going to play this clip uh, here in a moment. But first, I've got to say this. We can't fund this operation without your help. And today, all the Black Friday specials on colloidal silver, 50% off, Supermel Vitality, 30% off, uh, the hair, nail, and skin formula that's already super uh, discounted, 30% off. Everything is 30 to 50% off today. 50% off of little silver. We very rarely do that, only maybe once a year. That's going for Black Friday, a great way to stock up on that. Uh, also, we have free shipping store-wide only today with promo code FREE, because we can't give it to everybody, but the people listening to the show today and the folks watching this later on YouTube and Facebook, you get uh, free shipping on top of that. We can't do it for everybody because it's such a lost leader that we'll lose money if everybody does it. But just for the hardcore listeners listening on the day after Thanksgiving, uh, FREE, F-R-E-E, at checkout, we need your prayers. We need your support. We need everybody to also just spread the word about our videos, our articles, because we're climbing, 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 climbing to 126 on Quantcast, bigger than BBC, bigger than the New York Times. That's not rhetoric, folks. That's happening. But we're now in the target of Obama and the globalists saying next move is they're going to, quote, shut down the fake media. That means us. That means you. So we've got to grow even faster. These criminals aren't going to let us take this country back without a fight. So listen to me. 
When we talk about grand strategies, when we talk about hardcore stuff going on, when we talk about inside baseball taking place, you have no idea the effect you're having, how powerful you are, folks, how powerful your prayers are. You have no idea the stuff I know that I'm not at liberty to tell you here on air. But understand, Donald Trump on the day of 9-11 was on local at NBC9. People are going to the archives now, digging up stuff on Trump and, and, and the stuff they try to use against him. I, I'm, I'm told this originally surfaced with them a few weeks ago but didn't get any traction, trying to say, oh, look, he's a 9-11 truther. Now it blows up in their face again. Trump understands how the whole thing works. So let's go ahead and play this clip from 15 years ago on 9-11 as the towers had collapsed on New York's Channel 9. Here it is. <laughs> Donald, you, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. We're going we're gonna to go to break, come back and play it again, and I'm going to punch out here and let Paul Watson t t to take over. But, Paul, I I'm not kidding. I was literally praying for God to show me whether Trump was totally for real. And, 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 and can you believe that false flag came to mind, that he would expose it? And here it is. I tell it's you, an amazing video. We'll get back oh. to play the rest of it after the break. Stay tuned. This is the Alex Jones Show Live. We are back. It's the second hour of the Alex Jones Show. And we were talking about this amazing clip up on Infowars.com. Donald Trump talking about 9-11. Never before seen. This, I've not seen this clip before, and I've seen most of them. We've got Alex Jones with us to talk about it. But let's go back to this clip. Donald Trump talking about the events of 9-11. Here it is. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows of the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. And in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously. Because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. Most buildings are built with the steelers on the inside around the elevator shaft. This one was built from the outside, which is the strongest structure you can have, and it was almost just like a, uh, like a can of soup. You know, Donna, we were looking at pictures all morning long of that plane coming into uh, building number two, and when you see that uh, approach the, the far side, and then all of a sudden, within a matter of a millisecond, the explosion pops out the other side. Right. I just think that there was a plane with more than just fuel. I think, obviously, there were very big planes that were going very rapidly because I was also watching where the plane seemed to be not only going... All right, and again... Um that's just the second half of the club. I'm sure Paul will play it in a longer segment later end to end. It's on InfoWars.com. This is so huge. I'm coming into the office, and I'm going to shoot an emergency report in HD with this. Uh, this is just unbelievably powerful. And, uh, again, I don't get into the metaphysical. I'm a Christian. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But my whole life, I would have dreams that came true exactly like uh, things later happened. Uh, I kept that private until a few years ago, but I've just a lot of folks have those dreams. It's been proven. It's been documented. Everybody knows the sixth sense is dead on, women's intuition, you name it. And I've really been constantly thinking about the different angles and then also have a lot of sources and looking at what Trump's doing. And, and it was so clear to me last night, stand behind Trump, support him, criticize things he does you don't like, but don't make it a hysteria and an anti-Trump train because we know Soros and Michael Moore and others are fomenting this and trying to steal the election from him when they openly stole five states. 
uh, and, and he still won. So it's very clear. Get behind Trump more than ever before, but also you know, try to do everything you can to pressure, because uh, he's got pressure on him from the other side, for him to appoint nothing but patriots. But don't expect that to happen, because he's got to have navigators inside. But I'm telling you, I never talk like this on air. But last night, I laid there in bed for two hours, got in bed about 10, thought I could go to bed because of picking out with family uh, you know, over on, on Turkey and dressing. And I just kept thinking and thinking and getting up and walking around and drinking ice water. And just and I just I just thought, no, Trump exposed 9-11. Trump threatened the Bushes with the information and their Saudi connection. Trump knows. And then I thought, well, Trump needs to go public then. And I, and I just thought, he will, he will. Because, you know, when you have these deep thoughts that are from your spirit, they're not exact. They're like generals, like looking through a fog. And then I just kept thinking, the Trump card is false flag. He will expose false flag. He has Trump cards. Trump has Trumps. And then this morning I get up and I'm like sitting here going, well, never got the sign. Never, you know, uh, what do I do? And then boom, there's Trump right in front of me, updated. As I was looking at it, the site updated and there was the video that somebody at the office, I want to find out who, posted uh, with our logo and stuff. Paul, I mean, I know you don't get too metaphysical on air either, but what do you make of this? No, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it goes to the heart of the point, which is he was not an insider at any point and he still isn't. You know, the question is with this recount, if they try to steal it, what's going to happen? The media has legitimized protests by butthurt Hillary supporters' riots. What's going to happen if she basically tries to install herself as part of a coup? It's going to be absolutely I know you've mayhem. got another guest coming up. Uh, when is that guest on? He's on in the next segment, but we can uh, keep you on the line, Alex. We're going to a break now. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Alex. Infowars.com. Don't go away. This is Alex Jones via the telephone. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson is hosting via video uplink from London, England. He has a very informative guest joining him here in about four or five minutes. Uh, the reason I'm on the broadcast today is we keep warning people the Democrats are raising money to do recounts in only states Donald Trump uh, won. Uh, Jill Stein of the Green Party is raising money from top Democratic Party donors to only do recount. She says it's not to overturn the election. She says it's for voting integrity. That is a complete, ball-faced, naked, transparent, insulting lie that a five-year-old could figure out. There were at least five states that Hillary won in smaller margins than Trump won the states they're trying to recount, like Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and others. So I'm going to explain that again very, very slowly and very, very clearly so the Democratic listeners can understand it. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. Jill Stein is not doing a recount anywhere but in Trump states that he won by narrow margins. We have had the top Democrat, top liberal uh, documented election fraud expert on Bev Harris saying that Hillary clearly stole five states from Trump. No one wants to look at those states. Now, they always said, oh, my gosh, there's no election fraud, but if Trump wins, it's the Russians. Are they preparing to try to come out and say the Russians stole the election? Now, folks, they're, they've got top Democrats who have given $7 million the last two days. CNN on their front page earlier had the graphic in different articles saying she won. So this is a bare minimum to discredit Trump and then activate the Black Lives Matter communist George Soros groups that are all over the streets. We've got eight cops shot and killed in the last 10 days. We've got four or five of them shot just the last two days. We've got a whole bunch of them injured. I mean, the numbers are so high, I can't even keep track of them. This is all part of a destabilization program with butthurt, mentally ill, weirdo, anti-Americans uh, who actually think George Soros and Hillary and the globalists are there to help her. And Obama doubling black unemployment are there to help them. Uh, so, I mean, I, I told you last Saturday, I was in a liberal area of Austin and had a guy walk right by on video. I was doing a Facebook mentions out in the parking lot and said, F you, Alex Jones. Then I go inside. I walk out. A guy follows me out in front of witnesses. I, I did videotape because it was so shocking. I didn't think to pull my phone out. And he brandishes his firearm on his side, you know, bowing up to me. And, and the, uh, the attacks are happening all over the country. These people really, really do mean business. This is so incredibly important. Now, if anybody ever doubted how real Donald Trump is, there's now a Channel 9 New York TV piece from 9-11, 15 years ago, that surfaced of Donald Trump talking about bombs in the buildings, and only bombs can bring it down. Now, I was told by folks close to Trump that he knows everything about 9-11. One of them's Dr. Corsi. He's on record. I can say his name. They've worked together for 40 years. Obviously, Corsi was involved in intelligence, and I'm just going to leave it at that. And 
that he tells me Trump knows, quote, everything and beyond. Well, I've talked to Trump on air and off air. I'll leave it at that. And he does know basically as much as I do or more. That's why he'd let Jeb and, and all of them know, look, you're in bed with the Saudis. You stood down on 9-11. There was a uh, anti-globalist intelligence coup against them through WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks was going to release the hardcore evidence of child uh, pedophilia even more. If Hillary stole it, that's why when she tried to steal it that night, they told her, stand down, Trump's won. Uh, you already stole five states. It didn't work. Don't try it. But the plan to challenge him, even though Hillary has stood down, has now moved forward. That's one problem with now Assange not being on the radar and Assange not releasing a lot of new information. Everything I was told behind the scenes is now clicking that they haven't given up, folks. They were playing possum, and the attack is back on. I'm going to come into the office right now and shoot an emergency report for maximum coverage on all this to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I want to thank our amazing skeleton crew. Uh, with uh, Matt and CJ and everybody else that's up there who didn't even get a Thanksgiving or a break. And listen, they volunteered to do this because they understand they have kids. There is no future if we don't stop this. I took off basically under everybody's orders because I'm so burnt out. And I've actually got a cold this week, but just kept working. But I just can't help it, so I'm going to come in. I, I came in yesterday. I came in the, 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 the day before, obviously. And I'm not bitching. I'm just letting folks know I'm doing this because we're in the middle of a total war, and they use Thanksgiving for everybody to go to sleep, just like they launched the Tet Offensive during the Chinese New Year in Vietnam. They're launching right now. They're launching. It could be false flags this weekend. God knows what. Obama's ordered the border open. He's ordered drones to stand down on the border while surveilling us domestically. Uh, we are wide open. And I'm, and I'm telling Trump, and I told Trump this last week, and I told him the week before that, and I'm, I'm going to tell him again if I get to talk to him on Monday. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, I may try to. I'm getting on the phone right now. That I'm telling everybody he's got to take the gloves off and go after these people. Now, I know he's not president yet. But they know, folks. I didn't want to tell everybody this. And I didn't get this from Trump, but I got it from high-level people, and I could see it in the tea leaves. Trump knows they're going to move against him if he didn't play possum and act like he was going to be friendly. But they already smelled it. They already know it. So it's just – you can't have the cake and eat it, too. This country is still in a death battle. In fact, we're in a bigger one now than we ever were. Paul, I want you to comment on this and go to your guest who's holding, uh, but obviously breaking news, Infowars.com, spread the word. Get these videos out of this live transmission. This is absolute maximum alert, ladies and gentlemen, maximum alert. The Democrats, through Jill Steiner funding, only recounts in states where, where the Democrats, to a great extent, still control the local machinery but lost big time. You understand that? They are doing it where they still control the local government, where he basically took Democrat areas. And so this is where they're in control and can now stuff the ballot boxes and claim uh, that Trump uh, either stole the election or that it was all a mistake. But the tell is they're not doing this in any battleground states or blue states that Hillary narrowly won where we know she clearly stole it. This is a maximum red alert. They mean business. They mean to overthrow our country. They've got terrorist forces standing by, jihadis, communists, scumbag, Black Lives Matter, brainwashed race groups. This is a war. This is not a radio show. This is an emergency transmission. Now back to Paul Watson in London, England. Okay, there goes Alex Jones, and actually what's interesting is he mentioned WikiLeaks. We had a thing, what, a few months ago now where there was some confusion whether Roger Stone was in contact with WikiLeaks. The mainstream media freaked out about it a little bit. Well, Assange has gone somewhat under the radar. A bunch of people on the internet think that he's dead. I don't believe that for a second. In fact, they sent out a kind of coded message in a Bitcoin payment saying that everything was fine. What I do know for a fact is that WikiLeaks contacted me directly three days ago, wanting to discuss something, I don't know what, and I wouldn't mention it, apart from the fact that they haven't got back to me since. Three days later, complete radio silence from WikiLeaks. According to some people, Assange is the main person in control of that Twitter account, their official Twitter account on which they contacted me. And, you know, the lines of communication are open, but they contacted me and then went completely radio silent, nothing for the past three days. So... Assange has gone under the radar. Maybe there's something going on there. Maybe there isn't. But there, there are a lot of questions swirling about WikiLeaks. As this Pizzagate scandal continues to deepen, which we're going to go to talk about in a little while. But we have our guest, Mike Cernovich, author of Guerrilla Mindset, MAGA Mindset. The website is dangerandplay.com. Mike, we've got a few minutes here before the first break. I just want to get your take on this because we've been talking about it throughout the entire show Jill Stein has now announced officially they're going to have 
or at least file for a recount in Wisconsin. They've raised enough money to do it in Pennsylvania. They're going to raise more money to try and do it in Michigan. Absolutely phenomenal, strangely phenomenal amount of money raised in such a short period of time. Almost double the money raised for her entire presidential campaign for the Green Party. Of course, in Michigan, there, were, there was no electronic voting machine, so why are they investigating that? They're only having a recount in states that Trump won, even though there are states that Hillary won with more narrow margins, and yet there's no recount there whatsoever. Now, I know Bill Mitchell isn't particularly concerned about this. I think you said on Twitter that you don't see this as, as a big issue. Why do you think it's a big deal? It isn't a big deal. I mean, we had a lot of concern about vote fraud before the election. Why do you think that this isn't a big deal? Because they were already caught in Broward County. So we sounded the alarm. Here's what happened in Broward County, Florida. And this is one reason Trump won Florida. There was a secret room. You wouldn't believe this, but a woman signed an affidavit. There was a secret room inside the headquarters of the Secretary of Elections of Broward County where people were caught filling out ballots. They would take ballots and fill them out um, however they wanted. So they were essentially filling out absentee ballots. They already tried to steal the election by um, taking your absentee ballot and filling it out with a different voter. A very courageous whistleblower, a temporary employee, exposed that plot. And then when, the, when it was investigated by law enforcement, they said, oh, what she saw was true, but really they were just cor correcting ballots that were sent in by military members. So they've, they've already been caught doing it, and we already have evidence that they've been doing it. That's one reason that I'm not especially concerned. But, I mean, isn't, isn't the fact that they've already been caught trying it a reason at least to have observers there, you know, in Michigan, for example, overseeing this process? Couldn't they just do the same thing where they try and introduce a bunch of new ballots and say, oh, these... We didn't see these on election day. We'll have to include them now. Isn't that a possibility? Given that, you know, this has come from people aligned with the Clinton campaign. It's not come directly from Jill Stein. Oh, exactly. Vig we have to be eternally vigilant. That is, a lot of people are making mistakes thinking, oh, Trump won, party time, now we can do whatever we want. We have to be even more vigilant than we have been ever before. So I'm not dismissing all of the concerns. But what I'm saying is we already know what they're going to do before they do it. So it's kind of like playing a game where this is how they're going to steal the election. And then we can take measures to prevent them from stealing it. So you're 100% right. People should be vigilant. People should be concerned. This is why Trump supporters came out and voted in such high numbers so that it wouldn't even be a close election in these battleground states. But again, Trump's people in the GOP, as much as we might not like the GOP establishment, they are aware of what is going on and they know what to look for. Okay, and we're going to get your take on Trump's initial moves. Obviously, Mitt Romney still floating around as a potential Secretary of State. You said that that could potentially be a line in the sand for you. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into Richard Spencer and this attempt by the mainstream media to basically end the alt-right or to redefine it. Mike Cernovich is our guest. This is The Alex Jones Show Live. We'll be right back. Breaking news at Infowars.com. We are back on The Alex Jones Show with Mike Cernovich, our guest, who has basically been characterized on many occasions as one of the top election influencers, especially via his Twitter account. Obviously, he does Periscope video broadcasts as well, which are extremely popular. But again, named over and over again as one of the top election influencers uh, by the mainstream media, also attacked relentlessly like as one of the top election influencers uh, by the mainstream media, also attacked relentlessly like all of us are by the mainstream media. But what we're going to get into now is this issue with Richard Spencer. Now, this is an individual who we actually supported or at least defended back a few days ago when CNN came out and said that Richard Spencer, who is like a young David Duke style character, he was one of the individuals who coined the term alt-right. Here you see the footage we're playing of the conference that he headed up last weekend where members of his audience started giving Sieg Heil Nazi salutes. And you see the rabid enthusiasm with which they do those salutes. This is being 
re-recorded on my Android because the pricks at Atlantic have caused a copyright dispute with Alex Jones Productions of the Alex Jones Show, even though uh, good info warriors like myself have uh, permission for rebroadcast for uh, nonprofit use. They will try to put commercials on this channel, but I don't want that crap on my channel. So I have to stop this for a couple seconds and then I'm restarting it now. Enjoy it. Just bear with it. Just during this conference, this was immediately capitalized on by the mainstream media who were invited into that conference to basically recharacterize the entire alt-right as this fringe neo-Nazi white supremacist element, taking that element and making that define the entirety of the alt-right. We defended this individual, I think it was on Monday, CNN said that in this speech he came out and said that Jews aren't people. Well, if you watch his speech, he wasn't talking about Jews when he made that comment. He was talking about the mainstream media and basically that was a complete hoax. He never said that. We also defended this individual when the editor of Politico a few days ago came out and encouraged people to attack him with a baseball bat. Okay, so we defend his right to free speech, which doesn't mean we have to agree with it. But Mike, we've got plenty of time to flesh this out. Just to explain to the audience who this Richard Spencer is and what happened at this conference last weekend. Well, the first question, or my first comment is in the form of a rhetorical question. Why is The Atlantic producing a documentary on Richard Spencer? Why is the left-wing fake news media spending millions of dollars to build up and promote Richard's brand. Meanwhile, I've been no platform and banned from television. You, the only time they want to talk to you is to try to attack you. So why is it that in an era of no platforming, where the norm for the fake news media is to just say, these voices are too powerful, they're too persuasive, they're too compelling, we cannot have their voices grow bigger. They want to ban us, but they want to do a documentary on Richard Spencer. Why do you think that is, Paul? Well, it's because you've made the point before. I mean, we've created our own platforms. We don't need edited, deceptively put out mainstream media hit pieces to try and get our message across. I mean, I'm doing 250 million Twitter impressions a month. You've got hundreds of thousands of YouTube views. You're the same with your Twitter, your Periscopes. We don't have to rely on the mainstream media to get our message out. Now, Richard Spencer is a guy, obviously I'd heard of him, I knew of his name. I didn't even know what he looked like, let's be honest, until a week ago. You go to his YouTube channel, he's got like 4,000 views on his videos. You know, I can upload a YouTube video, and again, this is not bragging, I'm making the point that we resonate. I can upload a YouTube video and it gets 4,000 views within five minutes. Yeah, these people struggle to get it over the course of months and months. So the question is, why are they giving them so much attention now? Why right, is The exactly. Atlantic making an entire documentary on this individual and on this group? And in the aftermath of this, this is what we've seen, even people on 4chan, and they're not exactly known for being that sensitive about political correctness. Even people like Paul Ramsey have come out in the aftermath and said that giving Sig Heil salutes in front of the mainstream media and, you know, they can claim it's the Roman salute. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. You know, we know you're neo-Nazis. You might as well just embrace it. They flip from being proud of it to saying, oh, no, it's not a Sig Heil. But they give these salutes in front of the me mainstream media. No matter how you splice it, that is terrible optics. And as you said, that gives the mainstream media an instant victory. This is why Trump had to come out immediately and, quote, disavow the alt-right. I mean, from my perspective, he was just disavowing this particular tiny vocal fringe minority of the alt-right. But in the aftermath, it's caused this kind of fissure where now respectable people who resonated, who had success, who won the argument, who got Trump elected, are now having to distance themselves from this fringe radical group, correct? Right. I could, I could make a, a periscope of me drinking a cup of coffee <laughs> and I'm going to get more views than Richard Spencer. And yet the, the fake news media is saying Richard Spencer is the leader of this movement. He is the man. He is everything. Well, if he were, why doesn't he have readership? Why doesn't he actually have an organic platform? Why doesn't he have his own following? He's very marginal. 
So what the media has done as a way to discredit Trump and as a way to discredit you, Alex Jones, me, Roger Stone, the real freedom fighters, they're building they're him up. The leader. We'll be back. Hold that thought. Mike Cernovich will be right back. Stay tuned. We are live with Mike Cernovich, DangerAndPlay.com. So what basically happened was the mainstream media invited this white supremacist group, or at least and basically invited them for a documentary, said, we're making a documentary, The Atlantic, it's coming out next month. We want to attend your conference to hear your message. And it's the same thing that I get basically every other day now from the mainstream media. They're all polite and friendly with you up front. Oh, it's not going to be a hit piece. Oh, no. Of course, when you actually do it, it's a massive hit piece. They edit you. They make you look ridiculous. That's why, unless it's live, I don't talk to the mainstream media. I don't play their game because I don't need them. We've got our own massive platform. We are the media. We don't need the fake news media. So they basically got a bunch of people to do Sieg Heil Nazi salutes at this, quote, alt-right conference, put it out there immediately, put the video out. It went completely viral, over 2 million views, showed it to Trump. Basically, he had to disavow the, quote, alt-right because they framed these, what, 50 to 60 individuals as being the alt-right. And you can see how truly demented they look as they run up to the stage enthusiastically sig heiling. They're encouraging other people to do this Nazi salute. And, you know, whether they were provocateurs or not, some of them probably were. Well, don't allow provocateurs, infiltrators to come to your event. That's stupid to begin with. But as you can see, it wasn't just a few people. And there was, there was a story that came out after which said, oh, it was this half Jewish person. That was the only person doing the sig heil salute. Wrong. There's at least 12, 14, 15 people in that crowd doing this Sig Heil salute. So the mainstream media came out and said, Trump has to disavow the alt-right. Trump saw this video. He subsequently disavowed the alt-right. So then, of course, you had the big alt-right drama that spilled out over Twitter with, you know, myself, Cernovich, Molyneux, all kinds of other people. And they came out and said, well, you're just virtue signaling to the mainstream media. You're just virtue signaling to the left by disavowing yourself from this group. And again, do you really think I need to virtue signal to the mainstream media to get attention because I want to be on friendly terms with them? You know, I turn down their requests every single day because I don't need them. I don't need to play their game. So it's not us that's colluding with the mainstream media when we disavow from a group that literally worships Hitler. I mean, that's not really good optics, is it? That doesn't resonate with the American people. That's not what won Trump the election. So, Mike, you know, it's them that are colluding with the mainstream media. They need the platform. They invited the snakes into the den, the mainstream media, and the mainstream media got exactly what they wanted, right? Yeah, I believe, I believe the photo op was staged. I believe it was planned and that it was to it was a quid pro quo so richard gets millions of dollars in free media coverage he gets a free documentary about himself and then wink wink nod nod he writes hail trump and the provocateurs get up and do the roman salute that was the reason i the reason i distanced myself especially is because well a number of reasons one is it's folly folly beyond beyond measure Another reason is why did Richard bring Trump's name into it, right? There's a lot of questions that intelligent people would ask. And as you know, I'm a lawyer. So part of my job was to uncover when people are lying to me. Why would Richard Spencer invite the Atlantic in there with cameras and then mention hail Trump and then have people come up and do the Roman salute or Nazi salute, whatever you want to call it. That's just a little bit too perfect. Doesn't it seem a little bit too perfect to you? Like a, like a photo op is how I view it. Yeah, and you could actually see the most demented one in this video, which we've been rolling while we've been talking about this. The one who ran up to the front of the stage in another clip, he goes to somebody else in the crowd and basically sees them doing this Sig Heil Nazi salute and encourages them to do it again. So absolutely bizarre frothing at the mouth behavior it looks absolutely terrible. They demonize themselves, and any sane, reasonable person would have, would want to have nothing to do with this. I mean, uh, Ramsey Paul, I think Rams Paul on Twitter came out and said basically the same thing. And he's again, he's not someone who's really concerned with being politically correct. Let's just put it that way. But again, this goes to the heart of my point, which is, you know, there's a difference between drawing attention to 
something like anti-white racism, which happens every day. You know, we have hate crimes against white people. We had one with the Trump supporter being beaten up just a little over a week ago that got no news attention. We have that going on, but there's a difference between pointing that out and saying that's wrong and saying it should be discouraged. There's a difference between arguing that multiculturalism has failed and it's detrimental. There's a difference between all of that and actually being and acting like a neo-Nazi. So any sane, reasonable person would want to distance themselves from that. And it comes down to the fact, you know, this neo-Nazi strain of the alt-right, whatever you want to call it, they're the far-right version of social justice warriors. They're obsessed with identity politics. I'm more concerned about issues that resonate with people and identity politics doesn't. It's completely failed. Even Bernie Sanders admitted that identity politics was what cost Democrats the election. So why should we embroil ourselves in this bizarre identity politics game when it's proven to be a failure, when what we've proven to, done, to, to have done over the past year has completely resonated with the American people and it's basically got Trump into the White House? Right, exactly. And that is, again, why I view it as a photo op and sabotage. We kicked the media's butt the entire year and a half. We showed them you don't have any power, you don't have any influence, you can't rig the election for Hillary. We kicked their butt for a year and a half. And then what happens? This perfect little photo op that gives the fake news media a big victory, the first victory it's had for over a year. Again, that is why people say, Mike, you're, you know, there's a rule that goes something like never punch to the right. And the idea is that on the left, you're not going to hear them disavow people like Black Lives Matter, et cetera. I'm sympathetic to that view. I'm sympathetic to the view that, hey, if people want to be morons, there's enough people on the left we got to take out. Rather than fight with the fringe elements on the right, I would rather take on the fake news media and bring them down. However, I don't view any of this stuff that happened at NPI as being political activism. I view it as being a false flag orchestrated by the media because it was simply too perfect. The photo op is too beautiful. The Atlantic was invited there to do a documentary, and they got exactly what they wanted to get. So this, again, is an issue of um, there are always going to be saboteurs in our movement. As you know, most actual neo-Nazis have always been federal informants, Hal Turner, Many people like that have been actual informants, and that is what they do. So that whole 1488, and for you, for the listeners who don't really know, that's kind of the, the nickname for the neo-Nazis. There aren't actually very many neo-Nazis. Most of them are provocateurs who are paid by, well, we know for a fact that Hillary Clinton has had a super PAC of trolls called the Correct the Record, and that organizations like the Southern Poverty Law Center do have people troll and agitate and pretend to be these neo-Nazis in order to keep people afraid and to create divide and conquer. So as of right now, that neo-Nazi organization, NPI, I don't even view them as a legitimate organization. They're just another tool of the left. No, exactly. I mean, you mentioned Hal Turner. I remember when Hal Turner was attacking us years before he was revealed to be an FBI informant. And that's not a conspiracy, folks. It came out in court that Hal Turner was on the FBI payroll. He was being paid to act like a neo-Nazi and to make conservative opinion, to make Infowars look bad. That came out. That's all admitted. You can look at Germany. Over 10 years ago, it came out that the entire upper echelons of the neo-Nazi movement in Germany was completely run by the German federal government. Okay, they've got history on this. And again, this plays perfectly into the mainstream media narrative. They're saying, oh, fake news was what won Donald Trump the election. The KKK, the neo-Nazis in the alt-right, was what won Donald Trump the election. Even though, like the KKK, this National Policy Institute is so tiny. I mean, you can look at the people just in that crowd. It's literally 50 to 60 people. Compare that to the massive you know, tens of thousands of people at Trump rallies. This is a tiny movement, but it plays into their narrative to say, these are the people who elected Trump. This is what we have to fight back against. Then it legitimizes all the people out rioting in the streets. It legitimizes this recount. It legitimizes opposition to Trump. If this can all be pinned on neo-Nazis and they can say this is what got Trump elected. It's completely false, Mike. We know what got Trump elected was you know, hard work, hardworking Americans in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, 
They voted for Trump because they want their jobs back. You know, people in Arizona, people in Texas, they voted for Trump because they want to stop illegal immigration. They voted on the policies, not because someone emailed them a link to a two-hour documentary on Holocaust denial. They voted on the policies, right? Yet the mainstream media tries to make it all about this tiny fringe group of neo-Nazis. Exactly. As an example, I had an election night party in Huntington Beach, California. I put up one or two tweets about the party. I didn't announce it in advance. I had 100 people show up. I can get more people based on one or two tweets to just come hang out with no notice given than this think tank can have by advertising, promoting, holding an official event, mentioning it months in advance, really hyping it up. I could just send a tweet right now and say, hey, we're going to go hang out and get fish tacos in Hermosa Beach, California. More people are actually going to show up than went to that NPI neo-Nazi talk or whatever it was. But again, the big picture, and you and I know this, but a lot of your listeners might not fully appreciate it, that the globalists behind the media are also behind a lot of these so-called alt-right people. They want to fund it because it's a great way to attack us. It's very hard to attack Paul Joseph Watson. It's very hard to attack Alex Jones. It's very hard to attack Mike Cernovitz, Stephen Molyneux. It's very, very hard to, to, get, to get after us. So what they do is they create a caricature, they build up a brand, and then they use that person to attack everybody using the left. They love guilt by association tactics. That is what they're trying to do. And I'm not going to allow it. That is why I spoke up and I made sure the lines are clear. If people want to be 1488 little neo-Nazis, fine. I'm not going to argue with them every day. I'm not going to, you know, debate them. I have other things to do with my time, but I don't want them anywhere near me. But it's very seductive if you're in their movement and you're basically lazy and you have no audience to allow the Atlantic and the mainstream media to give you all this vaunted, you know, prestige. I mean, we were in the... We were in the trenches all year, you know, on social media, making these videos, putting out these articles, reaching out to people, and we resonated. They don't want to make us the kings of the alt-right, do they? No, they go to this weird, creepy little neo-Nazi group who's giving sick hails, and suddenly, oh, they're the new leaders of the alt-right. That means they elected Trump. It's complete nonsense. And again, look at the history of who funds, who controls these neo-Nazi groups. In fact, several of these neo-Nazi websites who now say they're the alt-right were against the alt-right when it started. So again, a lot of people have said that even these websites are being funded by the feds and they have history with Hal Turner. But let's move on because we've got about, let me see, four or five minutes left in this segment. Pizzagate, okay? This is not something I've really covered that much. We have laws in the UK where they track your entire... Uh, browsing history for a year and use it in criminal cases against you. People have been banned on Twitter for this because it's some very disturbing stuff. And it's quite hideous to contemplate. I mean, let's be honest. The New York Times came out, said it was fake news, which, you know, actually gives it more credibility because they're fake news. But Mike, walk us through it. What's the argument being made here with Pizzagate? Right. Pizzagate is an interesting story because there's a lot there, but what is there we don't really know yet. And the media is trying to, fake news media is trying to shut down the investigation before it starts. So there's this pizza part. This The reason it's called Pizzagate is because there's a pizza parlor in Washington, D.C., where a lot of people think there's a pedophile ring being run out of it. I'm not really quite sure um, what is going on. What I do know is that there's been a lot of creepy pictures there was a picture of where a child's hands were taped to the table with some kind of weird caption like, um, isn't this cute or whatever. I, I personally don't view um, restraining a child on a table to be adorable at, at all in any way. So there's a, the creep factor of the people who run this pizza parlor is very high. Tony Podesta, who's a political fix fixer in D.C., this is all true, too. When I tell people this, they go, this is a conspiracy. I go, you can find this article 10 years ago. Tony Podesta, John Podesta's brother, who John Podesta, of course, was Clinton's campaign chair. Tony Podesta and John, uh, you know, political fixers in D.C. Tony Podesta has to watch movies in an underground dungeon. Now, people go, Mike, you're... Conspiracy. Go, you can. They call it a subterranean basement, right? So Tony, they they said that the Podesta family are into art that is so um, shocking 
that they have to watch it underground. So people start to think, well, wait a minute, in what world do you need to go to an underground bunker to watch movies? What is actually going on there? And then, of course, all of the Podestas are tied to Jeffrey Epstein, who had that temple on his, in his pedophile island. He had the big temple, and the temple also had an underground dungeon, which, again, can be verified from drone footage. But the media doesn't want to talk about um, anything like that. They don't want to, we, all, we know there are pedophiles in Hollywood. We know that Dennis Hastert, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, was a pedophile. Again, that's a verifiable fact. So all of these kind of seemingly unrelated people and unrelated events are kind of coming together. And whether it's really based out of that pizza parlor, I'm not entirely sure. But there is a pedophile ring in the District of Columbia. There are massive amounts of pedophiles in Hollywood, massive amounts of pedophiles in the New York Times and in the fake news media. And that is why they are so adamant about fighting Pizzagate rather than investigate it. They immediately want to discredit it, just like the fake news media said Hillary Clinton's health was a conspiracy theory. And then she fainted on 9-11, which, of course, you remember. Um I think VigilantCitizen.com is, they've got a good summary of this Pizzagate story, which you can look at without, you know, fearing that what you see might be too disturbing. But this, this guy who runs it, and I'm, you know, there's a lot of things, the daycare child abuse phenomenon, for example, back in the, I think it was the 80s and 90s, that was a case of mass hysteria, and it does tend to circulate around these child abuse scandals. But what we know for sure is that this pizza place is completely bizarre. They've got weird artwork on the walls. The owner on his Instagram page is constantly sharing images of children and then making sexual references in these images of children. Again, you've got spirit cooking. You've got that whole thing within the WikiLeaks emails. It's absolutely bizarre. What we don't want to see is these people being harassed when there's no actual concrete evidence that they're doing something illegal. But... I would not want to take my children to that pizza parlor that's been at the center of this Pizzagate scandal. It's very bizarre, it's very creepy, and given the, you know, the level of the power of the people who are involved in this, and the fact that in almost every single major worldwide pedophile scandal, it always leads back to top judges, police chiefs, actors, and politicians, the elite. Every single time in every country, that's the case. We'll be back with Mike Cernovich on the Alex Jones Show Live, Infowars.com. Don't go away. We are back live on the Alex Jones Show with Mike Cernovich. Going to do about 10 more minutes with Mike. He is the author of Gorilla Mindset and MAGA Mindset. The website is DangerAndPlay.com. Want to get Mike's take on this. The Washington Post reports today, Russian propaganda effort helped spread fake news during election, experts say. So again, it's the establishment's complete obsession, their conspiracy theory, that the Kremlin is behind absolutely everything. Now they've got Infowars, they've got Zero Hedge, on a list of fake news websites, but not just fake news, fake news controlled by Vladimir Putin, controlled by the Kremlin. Of course, no evidence whatsoever for it. And as Mike mentioned back about 20 minutes ago, the progenitor of fake news in this election cycle was Hillary Clinton. They had paid trolls as far back as March and April operating on behalf of Hillary Clinton to, quote, counteract narratives, spread fake news in support of Hillary Clinton. So months before this fake news narrative came out, and I mean, let's be honest, there are fake news websites. They're pretty easy to spot. But Hillary Clinton was the progenitor of fake news. You know, 41% of Hillary Clinton's Twitter followers are completely fake. 41%, that's huge. And again, the mainstream media blazed the trail when it came to fake news. I mean, they only have themselves to blame. You know, fake polls, fake narratives about Hillary having a 98% chance of winning, you know, fake rape cases across the country, fake Brian Williams fairy tales about being hit by an RPG in Iraq, you know, Dan Rather's fake Air National Guard documents. They are the kingpins of fake news. Now they're complaining about fake news and saying, oh, it's all controlled by the Kremlin. Mike, what's the end game of this fake news narrative? Is it just about internet censorship? Oh, 100%. This is, this is a real threat. The fake news attack um, actually 
concerns me far more than this Jill Stein false flag operation. Here's what happened this election. The fake news media, like the New York Times, which is owned by Carlos Slim, who is a monopolist in Mexico, has robbed the country, the poor Mexicans, and billions of people. You'll never read about that in the New York Times. These little private bloggers are furious that people like you and I had a massive impact on the election, and they want to get us off the grid because we are more powerful and we are more trusted than the fake news media is. They want to get our websites de-indexed from Google. They want to get us banned from Facebook. They want to get us banned from Twitter. Moreover, fake news is actually tied in to that neo-Nazi salute stuff. So the fake news media, the reason they're giving those neo-Nazis coverage is because then the fake news media can say, oh, look, actually, Paul Joseph Watson, Mike Cernovich, Alex Jones, Stefan Molyneux, these guys are all part of this little neo-Nazi movement. They should be banned and deplatformed. That is the end game. It's all connected. They really are furious that they are no longer able to influence public decision making. Because, again, think about someone like you. If you didn't have a platform, you would become a slave to the fake news media. You would have to repeat their talking points or else you would not be allowed on television. But that is why when you go on CNN, everybody kind of has the same talking points. There isn't a real difference between right wing and left wing. It's all globalist talking points. The fake news media, they're losing power. They're losing influence. So they're going to come after us hard. They're going to try to censor the Internet hard. That's one reason. And Obama signed over the Internet to the U.N. That's another potential end run um, around the First Amendment in the United States. So fake news right now, that whole story is one of the biggest threats to free speech today. I mean, it's amazing. I was looking last night. BBC News has 27 million Twitter followers. I've got about 373,000. I get more retweets than BBC News. You get more retweets than BBC News. We're resonating, we're winning, they're losing. That's why they're falling back on this fake news when they're the fake news. We'll be back with Mike Cernovich, stay tuned. And we are live, we got Mark Dice waiting in the wings coming up about the Black Friday madness that has descended across America. Just wanted to mention this um, Washington Post article. This is a quote from this Washington Post article that claims InfoWars is a fake news outlet run by the Kremlin. Quote, This propaganda machinery also helped push the phony story that anti-Trump protesters were paid thousands of dollars to participate in demonstrations. That was James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. They were on tape admitting that they paid crazy people to go and start violence at Trump rallies. That wasn't fake news. That wasn't even InfoWars reporting it. That was a videotape secretly obtained and published. Again, another one of these fake news stories they claimed was Hillary Clinton's health. In fact, many mainstream media outlets had to apologize to us for not treating the concerns about Hillary Clinton's health seriously after she collapsed on September 11th. But again, they're going with this narrative. We just got a couple of minutes left here, Mike. Uh, final comments and tell people how they can find you on Twitter and where they can get your books. All right, final comments. The big hot story is fake news. Don't fall for it. Be on guard. Recognize that these big multi-billion dollar corporations are getting their butt kicked. That is why they're so desperate. That is why, while we must remain vigilant, always be on guard against the enemy, because we are against some very dark, even some might say demonic forces. Know that we are winning, and that is why they are afraid. So we should be really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Every day I wake up and I think I can't wait to get to work bringing truthful news and information to the people. And I bet you feel that way too, Paul. So my message to the people is keep sharing articles. Don't ever let the fake news media tell you that you don't matter. This election showed that you matter. What can you do? Not everybody is wants to be a big media star, and that's great. Not everybody wants to run a media company. That's great. What you can do, share articles on social media. Correct your friends. When they refer to something as fake news, let them know that the only fake news they're going to find is on the front page of the New York Times and the Washington Post. As for finding me, you can find me at twitter.com forward slash C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H. I have a book on Donald Trump, why he won. That is on Amazon. And I actually published the book before Trump won. That's how confident I was. 
that he was going to win it. That's called MAGA Mindset, Making You in America Great Again. That's on Amazon. But be inspired, people. It is a great day to be alive. I'm, I'm so excited, as Paul is too. Okay, there goes Mike Cernovich, DangerAndPlay.com. Go get his new book. Thanks for joining us, Mike. We're going to move on now. We've got Mark Dice waiting in the wings after the break. Before we go to him, let's go to this story out of Reuters talking about fake news. Merkel fears social bots may manipulate German elections. Oh, well, what a surprise. Angela Merkel, the hugely unpopular leader of Germany, who is plunging in support, is now blaming fake news for her demise. And listen to the quote from this article. In her first speech to Parliament since announcing plans on Sunday to seek a fourth term as Chancellor, that's right, a fourth term, Merkel called for a debate on how fake news bots and trolls can manipulate public opinion. Quote, in order to reach people, to inspire people, we need to deal with this phenomenon. We need to deal with people telling the truth and criticising you, and where necessary, regulate it. That's a direct quote from Angela Merkel. She wants to, quote, regulate fake news. And why is that? Well, it's because the AFD, the right-wing anti-immigration party in Germany, has more likes on Facebook than Merkel's own party. It's because the German people are sick to the back teeth of your disastrous policies. Oh, no, but it's, it's the Russians, it's fake news that's responsible for that. Really? Then why in a poll did 45% of respondents say they were satisfied with Merkel, a record low since 2011? That poll could not have been created by fake news or Russian hackers. That was a poll of the German people. You don't resonate with them anymore. They've rejected your policies. That's why you're losing. It has nothing to do with fake news. We'll be back, Infowars.com. It's the final hour of The Alex Jones Show. we got Mark Dice waiting in the wings to talk about Black Friday madness. But first, I want to tell you about some of the products at Infowarsstore.com. And particularly Brain Force, which I've got right here. Took it before I came on the show. Popped two of these before the show started again. When I went over to Austin, I think it was last year, again, completely jet-lagged, no sleep whatsoever. Had to sit in the, the big chair, host a three-hour radio show live. This helped me immeasurably. It gives you absolute mental clarity. Again, if you're doing any kind of intellectual task, it really helps you clears that brain fog, especially if you're tired. It really gives you a massive boost. It is brain force. And again, I was taking some other similar product. This is even better than that. We've got it at InfoWarsStore.com for just $20.96 on sale for a limited time. That's an almost $19 saving per bottle of, in, of brain force plus, and you get free shipping on that as well. So it's going to be even better than the one I've got here. I'm going to have to get my hands on some Brain Force Plus, and that is for sale at InfoWarsStore.com. Again, 1,824 independent reviews, the vast majority of them five-star. The people who are taking this are raving about it. Absolute mental clarity. Again, in social situations, it helps you with conversations as well. It's really multi-purpose supplement, and that is Brain Force Plus. Just $20.96. Right now, for a limited time at InfoWarsStore.com, almost $19 saving per bottle. That is huge. Available at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, if you look at the Drudge Report, we've got Seasons Beatings. One shot dead outside New Jersey Mall. Shoppers fight over towels. Riot over toilet paper. Sounds like Venezuela. Video. See them fight in Modesto. Man stabs parents during Thanksgiving dinner. Violence across USA. And at the bottom there, linked, is Mark Dice's new video, The Zombies of 2016. Let's go to that video. It was the night of Thanksgiving and all across the land. The zombies went shopping with their credit cards in hand. Thanksgiving has been forgotten by parasites like you, trading family and friends for a flat screen that's new. When all of a sudden there arose such a clatter... Santa with a bullhorn to remind you what matters. Mentally enslaved morons and social media slaves lost touch with reality and are racing towards your graves. Breaking news. The Center for Disease Control has revealed that a parasite had infected tens of millions of turkeys consumed on Thanksgiving. Once into the bloodstream, the parasite quickly made its way to the brains of millions of Americans, devouring the brain matter. 
leaving Americans mindless and without the ability to think. The television took over, leading them to wait in line to buy bigger televisions, new tablets, and maybe a new toaster. Stay tuned for updates as this shocking zombie apocalypse continues. It appears to be occurring across electronic stores around America. This is Mark Dice reporting. The devastation of eight years of President Obama has never been more apparent. Millions of Americans are waiting hours in line on Thanksgiving, hoping to save a few dollars on a new television, tablet, or a toaster. These poor mentally enslaved morons, unaware that they could simply order these items from Amazon.com and have them conveniently delivered to their front door. Brainwashed by the television to come and wait hours in line, to go deeper into debt that they will later regret. Thankfully, Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton, and we will soon make America great. And you can once again enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. Mmm, men need new television sets. Mmm, new video games. Hey, they're having a big sale. Oh, what's in your wallet? Only three zombies spotted at Cole's department store. Again, lending more credibility to the theory that the zombies are attracted to electronic goods at stores like Best Buy and Target and Walmart. Apparently not interested in clothing and kitchenware. Perhaps these zombies got lost on their way to the electronic store. We'll keep you updated on the latest victims of this zombie apocalypse on Thanksgiving. <laughs> This Walmart appears to have set up barricades to protect the store from the zombie hordes. They must have seen the reports of the zombies congregating around other stores and attempted to prevent the destruction of their own property. And Mark Dice joins us now. You can find his videos by going to markdice.com. That will take you directly to his YouTube channel. Mark, you do this every year now. <laughs> this is a tradition with Black Friday. What strikes me from watching these videos is... You never seem to get any kind of reaction. I mean, does anyone ever confront you? Does anyone ever shout back? Or are they all just, you know, in a daze, as we see in the video? Does anyone have any kind of response? It's eerie. And for those who haven't seen it, I attached a camera onto my vehicle, and I was just driving by slowly as the camera was panning the crowd. And it, it just has an eerie look to it. And to answer your question, pretty much no. One person told me to go home. I did a, a previous video at a different store that wasn't included in that segment. But they just stand there in, in, in stunned, which adds to the whole zombie theme. One year, somebody threw something at me. I don't know what it was. It hit the vehicle. But, I mean, I, when I first started doing this, and as society continued to sort of spiral down intellectually and, and morally, and as the outrage still continues to fester over the election, I was a little bit concerned about you know, possibly having the zombies start physically attacking me or start to surround my vehicle. And nobody moved. They, half of them didn't even look up from their phone. And they're just looking at me in a daze. It, it is eerie, man. It, it really is creepy. It, the zombie analogy is perfect. And I'd just like to tell Hollywood that I have the, the copyright on the Black Friday parasite infecting Thanksgiving turkey dinner, turning people into zombie genre, which would make a great film someday. <laughs> no, I mean, the thing about it, I made a video, I think it was three years ago now, where all I did was spliced clips of Black Friday people waiting outside the stores, roaming around, getting into fights with each other, spliced in clips from actual zombie movies like Dawn of the Dead, and by the end of the video, by the time I was rendering the video, I couldn't tell the difference between which was which, which was the actual zombie film, and which was the uh, human zombies outside the stores on Black Friday. So again, that, that zombie line sounds like a cliche, but it's actually true. The thing I never understood, and we can get on to talking about how Black Friday is a scam anyway, but why would you camp outside line up for hours. I mean, they must have such little respect for their own time when you can just sit at home and get the same deals on the internet. I mean, is, is there some kind of ritualistic aspect to this when it seems like a, a complete waste of time? They believe everything the television tells them. And, and perhaps there may be a very small handful, uh, maybe per, you know, five or 10 people who will get a television at a 50% discount. But those are gonna be the people that have to camp out and wait because obviously those five or 10 different TVs at that price 
are going to be gone within a matter of minutes. It's it's so strange, and you know, I feel really bad for the employees that have to work because Black Friday started encroaching earlier and earlier, and soon stores, maybe back in the 90s, stores were opening here in the U.S. at 6 a.m. on Black Friday, and then 5 a.m., some maybe at 4 a.m., and then maybe about four or five years ago, I think it was 2012, they opened on Thanksgiving night, some at 5 p.m., some at 6, et cetera. And so those employees who are used to working, you know, normal sort of 9 to 5 or, or retail hours, you know, uh, 9 to 9 hours, then had to go and work these weird graveyard shifts that are then being taken away from their families. So you know, I, I did this years ago to shame the shoppers to hope to stop this despicable, complete, out-of-control consumerism because it's a cancer on one of the major holidays in the United States. And it's just spiraled into a violent, just absolutely bizarre, mindless consumer fest. As I think you reported, now it's spread over to the UK, people are fighting not only just over televisions and tablets, but over toilet paper and, and products that have little to no value. It's it's so bizarre. It's it's really hard to even understand. It's it's it is turning into a Hunger Games scenario. I mean, I, you mentioned the UK. It was never really a thing in the UK that we would have actual fights in the stores. But now, over the past, I think it's two or three years, we see that. We don't see it to the same level as in the US, but. You know, you mentioned Thanksgiving. As someone living in Britain, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, obviously. I don't really recognize the significance of it in terms of, you know, comparing it to Christmas or whatever. How has that been diluted? You mentioned they, were, they start opening on Thanksgiving. Do you see that as a direct connection to the breakdown of the family, to the fact that people are spending less time with their family, don't want to spend time with their family, as to why these sales have started earlier and earlier? Well, think about the people who have to work retail jobs, which aren't just teenagers or college kids. You have a lot of people, sometimes even in, into their 60s, perhaps even in their early 70s, that are working these retail jobs. Again, whose hours are usually you know, starting around 9 a.m. or maybe they'll start a shift at noon and they'll work until 8 or 9 p.m. with a one-hour lunch break. So usually for, you know, ever since Thanksgiving had been in place or these big box stores were in business, they were closed Thanksgiving. People had to, uh, you know, literally come to work the next day. But that's that's totally understandable. It's the, the Friday after Thanksgiving. But when they started opening on Thanksgiving, you have countless, literally millions of families who have employees that work in these stores that either can't go to Thanksgiving dinner or can only pop in for perhaps an hour or two hours, or if they were going to travel. Many dish can't show up at all because if they had to travel, you know, even if a few hours, go to a relative's house, now they can't because they have to work and not only work, but work these strange hours and then take sleeping pills. They were recommending sleeping pills to the workers so that they could actually get to sleep because they were going to have to work these but midnight to eight in the morning. Shifts. Okay, hold that thought, Mark Dice. We'll be right back after this. We are back live on the Alex Jones Show with Mark Dice talking about Black Friday. And they say that if you want to understand what's most important to a society, then don't examine its art or literature. Simply look at its biggest buildings. And the fact is that in, you know, medieval times, the biggest buildings were churches, were palaces. That's where people went to worship. Now, in many cases, the biggest buildings are shopping centers. They actually design them like churches, like cathedrals, they have domes, they have spires, they have fountains for fonts, they have food courts for pews. And again, as religion has declined, shopping seems to have replaced it as the new ritual. This is an article out of USA Today. Is Black Friday a scam? We see these articles every single year. While Black Friday may be known for offering the lowest prices of the year, in reality, it's one of the worst times to shop. The Wall Street Journal studied pricing data across a wide range of product categories and found that most items are offered below Black Friday price points at different times throughout the year. For example, there's data suggesting that you're more likely to get a better deal on a new car in April than on Black Friday. They also have these deals that run out. They create artificial scarcity. Not everybody can get the deal once they get into the store. 
but they already have you in the store. So then they mark up items on all these other products. People buy them while they're in the store. So again, the retailer doesn't lose out. These idiots who go in there for a bargain end up paying double for something else that they don't even need. And the other factor with Black Friday is, as USA Today reports, what many retailers do is offer lower quality versions of popular products on Black Friday. These inferior versions are known as derivatives. So people are buying crap that's lower quality, marked up products that they don't even need because the deals on the actual discount products have run out. Mark, I mean, you've seen this year upon year. Are the lines getting shorter? Are people beginning to realize that this just isn't worth it? Do you see this craze dying out anytime soon? The lines have gotten a little bit shorter in the last few years. The first year, again, I think it was 2012, maybe 13, when they announced that they were opening Thanksgiving, not just early in the morning on Friday, the lines were massive. But these lines were still huge. I mean, you could see they were lined up well across the building, perhaps, you know, halfway across the parking lot in some cases. And that's just half of the wait. Once these people get in, and then if they find the product that they're looking for, they're going to have to wait in line again to go wait for a register. So these people are spending hours and hours to, to buy who knows what, to save who knows what. They would be better off just working a half a shift and then spending that money and buying a product, uh, even if they were going to save any. But it, it is a scam. I don't see... I don't see it dying down all that much. Thankfully, we had a few major retailers this year which announced that they were going to close. And that's, that's why we should resist. That's why we should really shame these shoppers because it's a free country. They can do whatever they want, but they're putting a strain on the families of millions of retail workers, again, who have to go into work and work these weird hours. And many of them skip Thanksgiving dinner altogether Perhaps that's one of the only times that they're able to see family members who come sometimes from across the country for that one dinner. And now if you can't, uh, you know, take the day off, if usually if, if, for those of you who've worked retail, uh, it's very difficult, they know, to take a day off, particularly on these high volume days. You can't just take the day off, even if you're a manager, even if you're one of the senior employees there, it's a mandatory day. And so these poor people have to show up. They have to cater to these probably largely intoxicated masses of, of people. And they're not lining up at the bookstore, Paul. They're not waiting to go and, and get some educational material. They're waiting to, to get largely products that further distance them from reality. As the clip showed that you played in the last segment at Cole's department store, which is largely just clothes and kitchen goods, there was nobody there. The three people were just waiting there. But you go to the electronic stores, uh, out here, Fry's Electronics is pretty big. Best Buy, the national chain everyone's familiar with. Target, of course. And, and those are the, the lines that are just absolutely massive. It's just, it's idiotic. It's really is symptomatic of the breakdown of the family, of the mass consumerism. And I'd be willing to, that, to bet that probably 80 to 90% of those people in line have massive, massive credit card debt, which in, in the United States here is, I, I think, well over seven perhaps $10,000 per person. And again, this is not an attack on capitalism. People are welcome to go out and trade and do what they like. It's this rabid consumerist aspect of it, which is again pushed by the entertainment industry, pushed by the news networks. That's all we're speaking out against. But after we get back with Mark Dice in the next segment, long segment coming up, we're gonna talk about the recount Jill Stein now announcing that they're going to do the recount in Wisconsin. What does that mean? Are they going to try and use this to steal the election from Donald Trump? We'll be right back, Infowars.com. We are back live with Mark Dice waiting in the wings. We're going to talk about the recount, Jill Stein's effort, which is not actually Jill Stein's effort. It came straight from the Clinton camp to have a recount only in states that Trump won. We're going to talk to Mark Dice about that here in a second. But first, I want to tell you about Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver at InfoWarsStore.com. Because again, we're not funded by giant pharmaceutical companies. We're not funded by dictatorships in the Middle East like CNN is, who pay them to make propaganda programs about corrupt authoritarian regimes. That's not how we survive and grow. We're not funded like Black Lives Matter is like MoveOn.org is by multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire globalists like George Soros. 
So, in fact, it really annoys me when people say, oh, why are you selling these products? What, I mean, why would we get heat for selling products that, for example, with Silver Bullet, has 4.8 out of 5 star reviews out of 737 reviews. We're not forcing this on anyone. Everything we put out is free. This entire show, the video, is free on YouTube. The live radio show is free to listen to. Everything's free. We don't ask anyone for anything for our content. We simply ask for your support to build the platform. And it's worked pretty good, hasn't it? I mean, when I started with InfoWars, it was, what, two, three people. Now we've got a huge network of reporters, writers, broadcasters, and that's why the mainstream media hates us, because we're taking them on and beating them. And Silver Bullet, Colloidal Silver, just $9.95 now at InfoWarsStore.com. That's a $20 saving for a limited time only. And in fact, this is great for boosting your immune system, but not just for people. This is good for sick pets. I had a cat that had cancer, feline cancer, Took it to the vet, basically said, no, you've got to put this cat down now. It's going to suffer. You've got to put it out of its misery. Gave it colloidal silver. That cat lived for about three or four years after it was diagnosed with feline cancer. So this is a huge boost, not only to humans' immune system, but if you've got sick pets, just mix it in with their food. It's completely tasteless. They won't even notice. And I mean, it, it worked with me. This is going to work to boost the immune system of man or beast. And that's why it's got excellent five-star reviews at InfoWarsStore.com. It is Silver Bullet, colloidal silver, available now for just $9.95 per bottle. Free shipping, stock up now. That is not going to last for long at those prices, InfoWarsStore.com. Let's go back to Mark Dice now. Mark, you put out a few videos about this last night. Again, Jill Stein of the Green Party is spearheading this campaign, even though it was started over a week ago with Clinton campaign operatives meeting with, quote, computer scientists. They want a recount. They've now funded a recount. In fact, as of a couple of hours ago, they announced that they had filed for a recount in Wisconsin. They've raised the money. It looks like it's happening. A lot of Trump supporters, and this is what's baffled me, don't seem to be too alarmed by this. They were scared, concerned about election fraud before the election, yet they're not concerned about any fraud happening with this. Do you see this as having the potential for them, for the Clinton campaign, to try some dirty tricks between now and the inauguration? Yeah, there's, there's two scenarios here. One is that this is it's just a desperate attempt to try to grasp at straws at this misinformation or this misinterpretation of the voting tallies and to perceive that falsely as if it's some anomalies and then to come up with the, the theory that it, the, the machines were hacked. And even if they were hacked, they would have been hacked in order to shave votes away from Donald Trump. Certainly, Jill Stein is not concerned about the George Soros connection to the voting machines in several major states. But yeah, th this also could be a cover for the big steal. And th this it, it's, it's quite laughable on one level that they're so desperate at, at this point in the game to try to grasp at what appear to be such short straws. But this, this could be, we can't put anything past these people. This could be the attempt to finally uh, steal the election for Hillary Clinton. Now, I'm hoping that this is a scenario sort of like the uh, establishment Republicans were hoping that they would get a brokered convention. Even Ted Cruz was leading that charge. And then he sort of backed down. And even if he would have gotten, uh, you know, it would have went there, it would have been a total, total mess. But we, we were getting right up to that point where it looked like Ted Cruz was planning and hoping to steal the, the nomination from Donald Trump through a brokered convention. And so now, thankfully, that didn't happen. Uh, on election night, before Hillary Clinton uh, conceded the next morning, a lot of people were celebrating that Trump won. But I was still a little bit cautious until finally those last few states were called early in the in the morning. So this this is quite concerning. I think this is a, also a money grab for Jill Stein. Initially, she set out to raise the two and a half million dollars. And then immediately when that was raised, she bumped the goal up to four point five million dollars, really getting money from the uh, from the useful idiot Bernie Sanders supporters and Hillary supporters hoping for some way anyway to take the election from Donald Trump. But if you do the math, 
the attorney fees would be the equivalent of having a team of 10 attorneys working full time for almost five months on this case, which the recount back in 2000 only took, I think, under under 60 days. So it's quite strange. I think on one level, this is Jill Stein attempting to remain relevant. Jill Stein not really having anything to do at this point now that her pretend presidential campaign has come to a close. So she's trying to rebrand herself. And while we do need to have some sort of oversight, we do need to get rid of these electronic voting machines. To, to, to do it at this point, specifically when pollsters have pointed out the reasons for these supposed discrepancies, quite strange. So it's, it, is, it is concerning that this could be used to try to find, once they're given access to these machines, who are these people that are gonna have access? Who's gonna have oversight to them? Are they gonna be able to trump up some, pardon the pun, but you know, manipulate the supposed tallies? It's gonna be really interesting to watch. We can only hope that this is just another pipe dream of the Hillary supporters, but it's definitely something to be concerned about. Exactly. I mean, Michigan, you know, Trump won by 10,000 votes. There's no electronic voting in Michigan. So they're claiming, oh, this, this was hacked. This was potentially hacked. There's some evidence. How can you hack something that's not connected to the Internet that's all run on paper ballots? That's the threat. Could they just say, oh, we've mysteriously discovered 15,000 extra ballots that weren't counted? And as you mentioned, the, the money issue. Zero Hedge just came out with an article basically pointing out if you read the small print of this donation website for Jill Stein's uh, fundraising campaign for this, it says this will not necessarily be used to fund a recount. This could be used to fund, you know, amorphous other projects in the spirit of the Green Party or whatever. So it could be one huge giant money making scam. They've raised far more money than is required for Wisconsin. They've filed for that today. And again, the point I made earlier, earlier in the show. Jill Stein came out and said that Hillary Clinton is probably going to cause nuclear war. I mean, that's how she would, I said she was vaguely pro-Trump. She basically said, oh yeah, if you're going to vote for anyone, vote for Trump, because a vote for Hillary means a vote for nuclear war. And yet now they're only counting the votes, recounting them in states that Trump won. He won Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes, yet Clinton only won New Hampshire by less than 3,000 votes. There's no recount in New Hampshire. Same for Minnesota. Hillary won by less than 44,000 votes. No recount in Minnesota. Nevada, she won by around 26,000 votes. Again, no recount in Nevada, despite all those three states being lower than Pennsylvania, which Trump won by 78,000 votes. So, Mark, she tells PBS News, quote, this is not being done to benefit one candidate at the expense of the other. Well, why isn't she at least doing one recount in a blue state that Hillary Clinton narrowly won? Or the states that have electronic voting machines that are tied to a board member of George Soros. And it's, I think that this is also an attempt to try to undermine the legitimacy of Donald Trump to uh, and try to further stir up the left, to add one more talking point to them to say that he's not really our president or we think that he stole the election. It, this is a tr typical tactic of the left is to really just accuse your opponent of exactly what it is that you are doing. Because just a few years ago, and even, even recently, we see any concern of electronic voting machine hacking by the establishment press was considered to be a conspiracy theory. I, I know that you guys were the target of some of these claims that Oh, Infowars claims there's a you know conspiracy theory of vote hacking, and you guys were raising these issues probably for the last t 10 to 12 years at least. And now, uh, now the mainstream media is not only saying, well, it's it's a concern, which what is which it is a concern, but they're saying that the Russians are doing it. And then with this Washington Post article trying to now blame the Russian uh, propaganda system on being behind the fake news, when again, another perfect example of the, the, the left using the tactic of accusing those of what they're doing, they are the fake news. I mean, CNN has their weekend show with Brian Stelzer, their you know, chief media analyst, and it's called Reliable Sources. This is a guy who tweeted out a joke ridiculing Tommy Lahren and James O'Keefe because Tommy was doing a live Facebook live broadcast 
and he was laughing at the number of live viewers. And within 24 hours, it had 2 million views, which her videos get an average of at least 5 million views per segment on her Facebook page. So that's, that's more viewers than CNN has in the regular viewing time. Building up to the election, a lot more people were watching television news, trying to you know, keep an eye on what it was that was going on. But now that it's over, that, that's more people than watch CNN. Many of your YouTube videos, my YouTube videos, get more viewers than CNN. The Hallmark Channel now has more viewers than MSNBC. The Hallmark Channel. Oh, no, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, tell me, Lauren, on some of her videos, she gets literally 25 million views. You go to CNN, YouTube channel, MSNBC, it's completely pathetic. But again, you know, that's why they're so concerned, because we're kicking their butt on a regular basis. They had The Daily Show come out and do a segment on Tommy Lauren. Basically, it was Trevor Noah saying, you know, laughing at her, but then saying, oh, no, but this is actually really serious, guys, because she gets 25 million views. They're finally starting to realize that we're kicking their butts, and that's why they're coming out with all this fake news crap, because they're the fake news. They blazed the trail for fake news by themselves creating fake news for decades, so they've only got themselves to blame. We've got a few minutes here, though. I want to move on to basically celebrity issues, because that's in many ways how you cut your teeth. You cover the behavior of celebrities a lot. You know, Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. Popular music, Hollywood, you know, the entertainment industry, the nightly TV talk shows, complete lockdown by the left, completely controlled by the left. They control this huge fulcrum of brainwashing, of manipulation. They still lost. I mean, that's what, you know, absolutely baffles me time and time again, that Trump won, given the strength of the opposition that was against him every single day with this drumbeat of entertainment industry, cultural propaganda brainwashing. I mean, you cover this more than anyone else. What I wanted to ask you, when you cover these celebrity issues, because you talk about the behavior, the comments of celebrities a lot, I mean, do you have a specific goal to that? Are you trying to hijack their narrative in covering these celebrity issues? Or are you just, you know, personally rejecting this whole pop culture system for your own sanity's sake, or are you trying to hijack it? I, I do both, actually. I mean, I, I, I criticize and show how disaster it is and, and what their agenda is and why they're doing it. Uh, there was just an interview a couple of years ago from Chevy Chase from Saturday Night Live who admitted that he was using his platform on Saturday Night Live to try to push the Democrat Party. This was an election back in the, in the, in the 80s. And so... Yeah, sometimes for, for my subscribers who aren't quite familiar with what I do, they might see a headline from a video which looks like basic celebrity news. Uh, and I'm using that as, I don't even really want to call it clickbait because uh, I am covering the actual topic, but then I'm really You're revealing hacking the narrative this. basically, right? Yeah, I mean, I might even put out a, a, a video about, oh, oh, you know, such and such a celebrity, you know, just had a new baby. And it appears to be, uh, you know, a, a basic celebrity gossip story, but within that story, I, I am culture jamming it to show the larger picture. And what's what's particularly interesting about this election is now we have Washington D.C. in 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 our corner, at least in the conservative corner, where if Hillary Clinton won, we would have had Hollywood against us, and we would have had Washington D.C. and the Justice Department against us. So this is a big victory, but we're seeing Hollywood really ramp up their attacks, trying to slander every Donald Trump supporter as some alt-right, secret, white supremacist, racist. And so we still have a lot of work to do. But I think we're, we're, we've seen a big blow to the celebrity culture with them crying in tears, both men and women, not just upset about Hillary Clinton losing, but literally in tears. I specifically watched some of the late night shows, which I usually never watch anymore because it's just pure liberal propaganda. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, uh, the, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. They were devastated. It, it was as if the United States had gotten struck by another 9-11 terrorist attack and they didn't quite know how to come on air and be funny in the wake of this supposed tragedy. And they were calling it a tragedy. And, and they still even are uh, two weeks after this historic victory. So we got a lot of work to do, but you know, it's people like you, Paul, and everyone over at the InfoWars that really had a large part in spreading the, the real news 
And, and that's why we did it, because through the alternative media, through Facebook, through social media, even with all the censorship that we've been covering with them, you know, shadow banning people, with them preventing hashtags from trending, with them manipulating the results of hashtags, with them preventing conservative news stories from trending, we still fought back and through social media and through word of mouth, we got the information out and exposed Hillary Clinton and the liberals and, and WikiLeaks <laughs> played a large part of that too for what they are. So it's, it's quite amazing, but the culture war will continue and they're, they're striking back pretty viciously. It's amazing, but we're having huge victories. We're gonna wrap it up there, Mark. I was gonna to touch on Kanye, but we don't have time for that. MarkDice.com, you can go there. That will take you straight to Mark's YouTube channel. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Paul. Keep it up, bro. See All right, there goes Mark Dice. Again, go and see his videos. Absolutely viral success again today with the Black Friday zombie invasion, which is going on across stores today. Actually, Black Lives Matter has come out and said that they plan to block white-owned businesses in Chicago today. It's probably going on right now to bring awareness about police shootings, economic issues, and alleged racism. So again, Black Lives Matter operatives blocking stores. That's probably going to prove about as popular as them blocking ambulances at this point. People are just going to reject that. They're not going to resonate with that. We'll be back with the final segment of The Alex Jones Show. Don't go away. We're back for the final segment of The Alex Jones Show. Latest on the recount. This is out of the Milwaukee, Wisconsin Journal Sentinel. Recount would have to move quickly. Wisconsin could be at risk of missing the December 13 deadline to certify its 10 electoral votes if clerks can't compete, complete an expected recount by then. So basically, we're not going to know until next week whether they accept this recount campaign launched apparently by Jill Stein. But of course, in the background, we've got the spooky spirit cooking presence of John Podesta and the rest of the Clinton campaign who quietly behind the scenes launched this in the first place over a week ago. So we're not going to find out if this Wisconsin recount is actually going to go ahead even though they've raised the money for it until early next week because the people there, the officials, are still on Thanksgiving holiday break. But again, we have to keep a close eye on this. This is absolutely crucial to not let them hijack this to play dirty tricks. This is not a done deal. How many times do I have to say that? Five months after Brexit, there still isn't even a date on when they will trigger Article 50 to get us out of Brexit because the political class Tony Blair, the war criminal, and the rest of them are trying to sabotage it. And they will do everything in their power to try and sabotage Donald Trump. This is out of the Ralph Report, another headline up on Infowars.com. Former Ready for Hillary director says Bernie Sanders may be a white supremacist. Yeah, that's right. Even Bernie Sanders is not safe from the charge of being a racist. This was Quentin James of a Hillary super PAC. Quote, I like U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, but his comments regarding identity politics suggest he may be a white supremacist too. What were Bernie Sanders' comments? Well, basically he said, the reason the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton lost the election was because they're obsessed with identity politics. He said, quote, one of the struggles that you're going to see in the Democratic Party is whether we go beyond identity politics. It's not good enough for someone to say, I'm a woman, vote for me. That's not good enough. What we need is a woman who has the guts to stand up to Wall Street, to insurance companies and drug companies. That's what Bernie Sanders said about identity politics being a complete failure. For that, by his own leftist crowd, he was called a white supremacist. And that's why they continue to lose, because they're still completely disconnected from the real feelings, from the real motivations of the American people. Washington Examiner reports 9-11 mastermind Al-Qaeda favors immigration to defeat USA. The jailed architect of 9-11 revealed Al-Qaeda's plan to kill the United States was not through military attacks, but immigration and, quote, outbreeding non-Muslims who would use the legal system to ensure install Sharia law, according to a blockbuster new book. So he's on record, the mastermind of 9-11, again, saying that this was the plan all along. And in fact, this is in ISIS documents. They plan to create these Muslim ghettos, to create this mass immigration, to radicalize those immigrants. And that's how they take over a country slowly and quietly. And now that's on record from the 9-11 mastermind. Over in Germany, 
a Woolworth store has cancelled Christmas because it has too many Islamic customers. Basically, they said that they had uh, failed to sell any Christmas items in their store. Again, this is in Germany because they had no customers who wanted to buy Christmas products because all their customers were Muslim because they brought in two million migrants over the past two years and basically turned into a ghetto. Refugees have burned down an asylum center again in Germany because there wasn't enough Nutella. A Syrian refugee has been arrested in Germany with bomb-making materials. They're paying the price of cultural enrichment, yet Angela Merkel is blaming it all on fake news. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Alex Jones Show. Alex will be back with The Sunday Show. We'll also be back with nightly news, breaking news at Infowars.com. For you to say that you're comfortable with fake news getting posted, that that's okay. Tucker, when you know this that, about, define fake that what this me. is about, well, you can't define fake. Yes, you can. What this Lies, is about is left-leaning mainstream media <laughs> blaming conservative media for losing the election, losing credibility, and losing readers. Their definition of fake news is anything that doesn't align with their leftist agenda. Freedom of speech is staring down the barrel of a gun loaded by a cancer of global interests that have laid claim to the last remaining fragments of the First Amendment of the United States of America. RT reports former Congressman Ron Paul revealed a list of fake news journalists he claims are responsible for bogus wars and lies about Hillary Clinton's chances of winning the election. Journalists from CNN, the New York Times, and the Guardian are included. According to the report on his website, Ron Paul Liberty Report, this list contains the culprits who told us that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and lied us into multiple bogus wars. Paul claims the the list is sourced and holds a lot more water than a list previously released by Melissa Zimdars, who is described by Zero Hedge as an ultra-liberal assistant professor of communications at Merrimack College. Zimdars' list in itself should be considered fake. A list containing actual fake news sites alongside true news gathering alternative view sites that utilize a system of dissecting the mainstream narrative and its long history of fake reports. Reporting. Fake reporting is nothing new. Just ask Brian Williams. After a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. It did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in the air crews who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. With the loss of the globalist foothold and the quiet death of the smith munn Act in 2013, propaganda is being waged on all fronts. George Orwell said, Threats to freedom of speech, writing, and action, though often trivial in isolation, are cumulative in their effect and, unless checked, lead to a general disrespect for the rights of the citizen. Is the Constitution a living document, open to interpretation, or is it something that must be read strictly and adhered to regardless of the day? You know, Scott, that is the question that is asked constantly of judges. And so to talk about strict interpretation or living constitution, those are not words I use. And they're not words that I think have much meaning. The very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. Lies will pass into history, George Orwell. You know, when we first got in there, started looking around and didn't find anything, I see, get that kind of sinking feeling that, uh-oh, and then, Time went on, and then we got tips, you know, there, I'll never forget the tip that there was crates buried, you know, in, in the Euphrates, wherever they think, maybe these are them, and they've sent frogmen in there, there's nothing there. In our age, there is no such thing as keeping out of politics. All issues are political issues, and politics itself is a mass of lies, evasions, folly, hatred, and schizophrenia. George Orwell. You have to represent all of the people, and the people have to believe that. You have to have the rule of law that applies to everyone, not just to some of the people. For those of you who are concerned about my using personal email, I understand. And I am sure they will reach the same conclusion they did when they looked at my emails for the last year. There is no case here. 
All the war propaganda, all the screaming and lies and hatred comes invariably from people who are not fighting George Orwell. You're helping us to destroy ISIL, and we will destroy them. You're keeping us safe. The low-key announcement of additional troop deployments marked the 11th by the Obama administration in the last 27 months, each time ranging from 200 to 1,500, such that the total number of U.S. troops and advisors in Iraq will exceed 5,000 by the time the president leaves office. It is up to the individual, emboldened by the rights of a free press and the protection of the liberty passed down from the founders to control their own mind and their own destiny. John Bound for InfoWars.com. Today I would like to provide the American people with an update on the White House transition and our policy plans for the first 100 days. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government, helping us to make America great again. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland, America, creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. These include the following. On trade, I am going to issue our notification of intent to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. Instead, we will negotiate fair bilateral trade deals that bring jobs and industry back onto American shores. On energy, I will cancel job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale energy and clean coal, creating many millions of high-paying jobs. That's what we want. That's what we've been waiting for. On regulation, I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. On national security, I will ask the Department of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to develop a comprehensive plan to protect America's vital infrastructure from cyber attacks and all other form of attacks. On immigration, I will direct the Department of Labor to investigate all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. On ethics reform, as part of our plan to drain the swamp, we will impose a five-year ban on executive officials becoming lobbyists after they leave the administration and a lifetime ban on executive officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. These are just a few of the steps we will take to reform Washington and rebuild our middle class. I will provide more updates in the coming days as we work together to make America great again for everyone, and I mean everyone. It's Tuesday, October 22nd, 2016. We'll be here for the next three hours and 50 plus minutes. And of course, there'll be InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Kind of feels like a Friday, even though it's a Tuesday, because a lot of people are going to obviously be taking off the next few days. Uh, we'll have some rebroadcasts, but also some original uh, content and live feeds at InfoWars.com uh, throughout the holiday, obviously, because this is not work for me. Uh, this is a very uh, distinct honor and pleasure to be your host. I talked about it last week, and I'm going to say it again. A lot of very exciting things happening. Trump is delivering on every front. He is looking at appointing and talking about appointing some people I don't like, like Bolton. But on the actual policies he's already announcing, he is delivering. He also did something particularly delicious yesterday. He called in the corporate prostitute Decepticon fake news media. And said, I hate you. You're lying scum. You're rats. Your system is collapsing. And basically, I don't want to work with you, so get out of here. This is beautiful. And I can tell you, laughing at the media, is the times I've talked to Trump off air, is something we do. Because they really are a joke. They're the enemy of this country. They must be denigrated. They must be hated. All respect must be removed from them. 
there's a big new study out via Canada and the UK. There's two studies, actually. Uh, but it's out of uh, Canada with a, a Canadian ambassador being interviewed, speaking about the studies. Finding that, again, U.S. media is the most untrusted in the world after the European Union-controlled media and the U.K. media. And, of course, they're all lockstep with political correctness and globalism, a very, very exciting thing. But speaking of delivering, it's now official. You just heard him. On day one, they will signal we are leaving the TPP, which we never entered, but Obama signed us on to. He's also announcing the end of the carbon tax. We've been under seven years, carbon regulations that are a tax, but Congress never ratified it. Congress rejected cap and trade in, in what, 2003. So think about that. And then it rejected it again in 2006. Bush has tried it. Obama's tried it. Congress has rejected it. Let me see. It's actually three times I remember. So now, why are we under it? Just like the EU, almost every member nation never got to vote to enter it, like the UK. How in the hell are they then signed on to it? But let me not belabor that. Let me, that's just one of the big things he's announcing. Bye-bye carbon tax. Bye-bye TPP. Making America rich again. Trump's stock market rally breaks all-time record. U.S. stocks hit high. Leaked document shows Trump does actually plan to build a wall. 100, 1,989 miles planned for rapid build. With the 300 miles they've got. That's total wall. Obama admin fines police departments for not hiring non-citizens. Now they're actually hiring illegals to be the police officers. Tim Allen says Hollywood calls Trump a bully, then bullies anyone who supports him. Obama administration shuts down aerial surveillance of the border while saying we're facing an Al-Qaeda ISIS imminent attack. Cal exit. Secession effort begins signatures gathering on the California ballot. I say we cut California loose, folks, and build a wall. I'm serious. Cut it loose. Not because of the color of the people that are there, but because it is totally given over to bankruptcy, totally given over to gun control, totally given over to corruption. The elites there all have lawyers that write the laws to basically pay no taxes. While everything is written to rob the average person, it is a disaster. We either somehow recapture California politically or it's a cancer that must be cut off. And I'm serious. I say cut it off. It will descend into bedlam and will look like Mexico City. And that's fine. But we cannot collapse into total tyranny. It's a beautiful state, wonderful people. But I have to tell you, when California finally does collapse, the migration of trendies will bring down any area they come to. Austin is under assault, infested by the laziest, stupidest, dumbest, most arrogant, horrible, politically correct demons. Shuffling, waddling around in circles. Uh, and they're all the banshees and people that moved to California thinking it was the new heaven, the new nirvana, the new cloud nine, the new Valhalla. And then they destroy it even worse, and then they come here. To the point of, I mean, if, I, if my headquarters weren't in Austin, if I didn't have family from here and I wasn't from here, uh, I would be pulling up right now. In fact, I'm actually looking in a few years, leaving these studios and leaving Austin. I, I just can't handle it. They have captured it. Uh, the defecation in the streets, the homeless people everywhere, the, the just nihilistic hatred of anything decent, um, running into the ground, the big mega banks tax exempt, robbing everyone, passing... Uh, Gen 21 uh, laws so that, you know, your apartment's 200 feet and costs the same as a 1,000 square foot. I mean, you want to get scammed and butt raped. Uh, Austin, Texas is the place for it to happen. And I'm sorry to use that mild French. I apologize. I'm going to stop it. I love Austin. It's a beautiful town, great people, but there's total election fraud, and you can't unseat the scum, and they just love it. They've, they've destroyed California, and now they're destroying my beloved Texas. Cal Egg's secession effort begins signature gathering on the California ballot. Now, that's just some of the news on that front. Let me give you the splendid, delicious news. Well, let me just mention this, and I'll cover it after break. President-elect slams smug media in face-to-face -face at Trump Tower. We're in a room of liars. The deceitful, dishonest media who got it all wrong. 
supposed to be an off-the-record meeting, but the Trump folks have confirmed this went on. He told them, look, I hate you. You hate me. Let's just be honest. You work for corporate execs that are fools. You've bankrupted yourselves. You have no credibility. And I just want to declare that you're scum. <laughs> That's exactly what I'd tell them. The New York Times and stuff want to talk to me. I go, are you talking to me as a prop to pretend we're doing an interview? And I loved watching so-called journalists like Stephanopoulos and people scurrying out of there. And Wolf Blitzer looked like he'd been flogged with a cat of nine tails when he left. Donald Trump's media summit was an effing firing squad. <laughs> he told Jeff Zucker, quote, I hate your network. Everyone at CNN is a liar and you should be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just too good. Oh, it's too good. Trump knows exactly what to do. We must bankrupt these organizations. They're already financed by kingpins and drug dealers and every other criminal organization you can imagine. They want to bring the country down, you're going down. Whatever little sponsorship you've got left, everybody has to contact your sponsors and say, I will never use your product if I see your ad on there one more time. You want to bring down America? We're going to get in your face. We're going to lean on you and see how you like it, you little bullies. You bullied this country around a little too long. Now, there's a story from Steve Watson, and Breitbart is chewing him up for this, and that's his chief strategist. Obviously, there's some separation there with the writers. I don't control what my writers write. I just hire them because they're patriots and you know, have a history of telling the truth. But uh, Trump gives Hillary a pass. Breitbart leads with criticism. And this is what Conway is saying, that all he wants to... Be nice to her until he gets in. A Senator Sessions appointment means that's not the case, but just let Trump get in in 58 days, then we'll see what happens. But it's not up to Trump. It's to be up to the Attorney General and Justice. And I got a feeling justice is going to be served. The Republican Party is going to be extinct. It's going to be relegated to the South, a party of old, racist, decrepit, Baby boomer pieces of garbage. To quote the Democrats. To quote H. Skrelix. But it didn't work, did it? Instead, they're talking about the Democratic Party going extinct. And the Republican establishment being run out on a rail. Or just absorbed by the Trumpian revolution. You know, there's a big article out dealing with Trump's son-in-law, who is one of his top advisors, Jared Kushner. And the headline from Forbes is that he won Trump the White House. That's the headline on DrudgeReport.com. You can see the cover of Forbes. And I think to a certain extent that's true because he got Trump early on to mainly focus on the Internet and to realize, to see Trump's not big on the Internet, that that was already the new media. They give him the credit for doing early videos that got 75 million views and stuff like that. Folks, we've got Trump. 500 million views on our videos about Trump. I mean, I'm not trying to get credit for that. I'm just stating if Forbes thinks 75 million views is a big deal, uh, I can show them where the views are. Or Drudge probably sent, I don't know, 20 million people a day sometimes to pro-Trump info. But none of us get the credit. It's the globalists discrediting themselves I mean, so arrogant that gets the credit, and then it's the leakers. But the reason it is important to look at how we won this is so that we continue to repeat it and aren't arrogant. We have to deliver tax cuts. We have to deliver at least spending freezes. And we have to absolutely secure our borders. And we have to cut the billion-dollar fighter programs that are pieces of crap and actually have a strong defense military. And, of course, we have to get fair tariff deals and we'll have such prosperity and such a boom that the era of socialism will be broken worldwide and the era of the robber barons will be over. And again, you had a lot of followers that kind of believed the mainstream media and thought it was invincible. But a lot of the reporters and people working for the system, they didn't really believe in it. They didn't like what was happening. And you're seeing that facade really collapse now. Now, there are the bitter, bitter, bitter people who believe in the whole false cosmology, they're going to become more psychopathic. And I'm going to talk about that in the next break, next segment. But just look at these numbers. Democratic Party going extinct. Administration. 
is disintegrating. They don't have any of their top people. Everyone basically hates them. Dems serving donor class, not working class. Representative Ryan admits. And again, they are just so disconnected, so arrogant, they think they're invincible. Look at this headline. 96% hopeful. Polls show tremendous confidence in President Trump. And all the national polls show people that thought he would destroy the planet day one are now seeing the stock market go up. They're seeing confidence. They're seeing Ford announce it's coming back. Uh, they're seeing Apple talk about coming back. And then the media spins it and says, well, it was never clear that Ford was going to go to Mexico. So this isn't really a victory. Oh, really? They would said they were going to Mexico with that SUV factory. The point is, is that there are economic things we can do to strengthen this nation and not just sell the country out. And they're still upset that's happening. And that's why they're so incredibly discredited. You can see that big scientific poll from Pew Research up on Infowars.com. I already talked about him delivering on the announcement day one in 58 days when he gets in to pull out of TPP, a foreign global government, to end the carbon taxes. They go, you're not allowed to do that, Hollande. The president of France lectured Trump yesterday from the national podium uh, in France, from the royal palace. Said, you're not allowed to do that. No matter what you say, you're in it. Congress never voted to put us into that unilaterally. It's a fraud. But that's the arrogance with the communist Chinese and the French president, the socialist dirtbag, lecturing us. Now, when we come back, I want to read more of the quotes. And again, I don't believe mainstream media, but more than 20 agencies were represented there. And they all basically said the same thing. So now you know it's true. Plus, it fits with what I know Trump basically says behind the scenes. He just called him in and said, you're scum, you're liars, you're delusional. No one watches you. Why are you so arrogant? Why did you lie about me so much? Why do you put out fake tweets? Why do you put out fake statements? What the hell is Bloomberg doing? Putting out fake tweets? What is your problem? Don't you know the American people see through you? How dare you not want to turn the economy back on so you can squat on top of people? That's what's going on behind the scenes. It's beautiful. They need to be read the riot act. Hey, scum, we see you. We know who you are, dirtbags. Empire's on the run. All right, let's get right into the really big, important news, obviously. Incredibly exciting things happening. Uh, Fukushima dodged a bullet, but narrowly. Be like a bullet going through your hair and, you know, cutting a swath through your hair, but not hitting you in the skull. Japan reported a 7.8. U.S. Geological saying 7.3, 7.6. It varied. That's about the strength that hit what, five, six years ago and made those reactors explode that are still melting down into the Pacific Ocean today. And they were reporting that the tsunami uh, was going to have be 10 feet or higher when it came in, but it was only a few feet high, caused some flooding, but uh, not any um, you know, massive damage like you saw in that dramatic, dramatic footage that we all witnessed when, when the uh, big tsunami hit Fukushima before. So that is certainly, certainly some good news there. Uh, continuing, uh, we are having Black Friday specials that kick off each day and that run for 24 hours right through Friday, I guess right through the weekend. And today it is Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. Now, obviously, you would take potassium iodide, but this is beyond that. It's pure iodine, true iodine, atomic iodine that goes into the thyroid, other glands so that you don't absorb the fluoride and the other garbage. And during a radiological event, uh, the radioactive iodine is the most common uh, fallout. But see, that's just an example. You want your thyroid filled with good iodine all the time so it's not absorbing all the other trash that's out there. Because it operates off halogen, off iodine. If it doesn't have that, it will absorb anything else to operate on. And you just see the record thyroid problems out there and the things that are going on. I've lost so much weight, been so much healthier. Uh, now that I've been taking it four years, and I religiously take it now, and it's almost a crutch because, I'm going to be honest, I work out now a third of what I used to, and with the super male vitality and Survival Shield X2 and things like that, and the DNA force I take daily now, it's really a joke that I only work out now two or three times a week, and I was working out six, seven days a week, and 
It just wasn't having the same effect. It was all because of my whole metabolic system was not getting what it needed. So this is truly symbiotic. You get great products. You, you fund the tip of the spear operation, fighting the globalists. I want to thank you all for your support. Black Friday week, free speech special, 30% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine. We have the all-new Brain Force Plus has arrived, now 20% more in each bottle, and a stronger formula on top of that. What's well, plus plus, really? Bio PCA, Black Friday special, started yesterday. We're extending it a few days. 25% off on our ultimate new hair, skin, and nails formula. At $19.95, it is a joke-level deal. It's now $14.96. That doesn't even make any money on that. That's a lost leader right now. Again, leading competitors have the same stuff in it and are $45, $50, $60 for one ingredient that's in it. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Um, That's what we do. I mean, take knockout. We take nine things that are known to help you give deep, restful, regenerating sleep, like lemon balm and chamomile and L-tryptophan and valerian root and melatonin and more. I remember saying a few years ago, I was sitting there sometimes having trouble sleeping, and my kids would sometimes too, so I'd give them a little melatonin tablet or a little bit of valerian root. And I was like, why am I buying this tincture from Whole Foods and this other thing, and this is $19, and this is $19, and I'm giving them both. Is, you know, together it works better, and I'm like, and, I, and I'm taking two. That's 40 bucks. Let's see how much this stuff costs, organic, high quality. We went out and found out we could put nine things in there, all the same doses as what other people do. It would cost probably $100 and sell it for $19.95. That's what we do. Super high quality, organic. It's an amazing deal. Infowarslife.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. And thank you for all the great five star reviews for the products on third party site, Power Reviews, and others. Be sure and read those reviews for yourself. And it is your purchases that make everything we do here possible. So I want to thank you all again. And then we're going to try to help get your taxes cut. Again, it's all symbiotic, it's a non zero sum game. A 360 win is the coin. Uh, coin of the realm here these days. And I'm, I'm, I'm even hearing more in the culture now about 360 wins and wins all around and, you know, what do you call a win where, where everybody wins? It's a 360 win. And you can really do that, folks, with technology and what we've got. The problem is some people are going to be better than you or I at certain things. They're going to be more beautiful. They're going to be faster. They're going to be taller. They're going to be stronger. We're going to have gifts they don't have. Together, we work together to build a better world. But you have to let people be shine. You have to let people be winners. You have to let the best kids at something get the trophy. And not just give everyone a participation trophy. And tell your kids, sorry, you get a piece of pizza. Because then kids learn to fail. And they learn to win. But if you don't learn how to fail and deal with it, you become a butthurt wimp. And I'm telling you, it is basket case world out there where about half the people, you can't criticize them. You can't tell them to fix something. You can't tell them to change something or they take it personal. And that is the mark of losers. They are instilling that on in us on purpose. They're trying to make the military where it can't chew people out or put people through dangerous situations. Well, then we're going to have a bunch of wimps, folks. You can't put the troops in red high heels and have them learn how to be trannies. And I'm not bashing trannies. The point is, that's not where trannies are supposed to be. This is all just a mentally ill joke. But they take away our basic rights and give us these faux rights. I'm going to get into this right now. So, I'm going to get into fake news. I'm going to get into the leftist bullying. I want to break down the fact that their bullying went so far, it caused people to basically rebel. And as they saw people to start to wake up, they thought, oh, we better bully harder. Most people went along with political correctness just out of hospitality, just out of being nice. And it was done by increment early on with reasonable sounding things to set the precedent. But as it got over the top, people are done. They have broken with you. They will never listen to you again. There's no gimmick you can push that'll work. Even when the mainstream media tells the truth now, people don't listen to it. They do not believe it. You have self-immolated. You have blown yourselves up. You have poured five gallons of gasoline on yourselves and 
struck a match. And you didn't do it for a good cause, like a Buddhist monk. You did it for a bunch of disconnected, arrogant, corporate lackeys who thought they were going to shut down competition and show up innovation worldwide and play technocrat. Well, they may get their goal someday, but not without a hell of a fight. And it's hard to hold back innovation. It's hard to hold back people that want to be free. You may get 30, 40, 50% of people to be mind-numb, drooling zombies. But the 30, 40, 50% that aren't zombies are going to take action and wreck your world, Cupcake. If 3 or 4% of us take action against you politically and economically, we'll devastate you. But you're not facing 3 to 5% like you were in the Revolutionary War in 1776, 1782. You are now facing, my friends, 30% that are hardcore awake, who are now becoming confident, who are now reaching out to others. You cannot beat us. You can fight us. You can protract this for a long time. But incontrovertible, you have lost. You have failed. History shows it. The facts bear it out. Current analyses show it to be conclusive. The only way you can win is killing everyone in a giant nuclear war and releasing bioweapons. You can, the elite currently can still attempt to kill everybody. It's the only power they have left. Long term, they'll lose. And as long as we don't let the technocracy flow get in place, so the elite controls it by computer and by robot, as long as we keep humans involved in the chain of command, the military is not going to let you do that. And I'm not saying they're angels. They're mercenaries, a lot of them. They want money. They want power. But they don't want to piss on prosperity and hurt grandma. They're more than happy to kill jihadis and stuff like that. But they're not looking to mount America's head on the wall. And you've now picked fights with the people that do the hanging. One good part of that movie, uh, Elysium, when the corrupt president is uh, bitching out her illegal mercenary commander. I could have you hung for what you've done. He goes, oh, really? He stabs her right in the neck and he goes, we do the hanging around here. But there's all these disconnected wimps, these technocrats, never killed anybody, never broke anybody's neck, never punched somebody's nose into their head, never done anything. And they just sit here shooting their mouths off at everybody about how tough they are and how they're going to dominate everybody. No, you're not. Bully. You're not even good at bullying. I've had people cussing me out in public, you know, walking up, brandishing guns, you name it, since Trump lost in Austin. And guess what? They always run off. They show the gun and then run off. They, they drive by and cuss at me and then drive off. Some of it's on tape. I'm just standing there. I'm not going anywhere. That said, though, I'm going to go ahead and set it up and go with full-time security. Not that I'm living in fear, but I have to go ahead and do it because, quite frankly, this is too important an operation. But that goes into expensing and things. And I don't want to cut back from what we do here in the operations. I want to bring in as much money as possible to throw every bit of coal in that furnace we can to get this locomotive of freedom going as fast as it can at ramming speed. I want as much wind in our sails to take us as fast as we can. It's all about the win, folks. And not winning because I want to be a, quote, winner, like some trophy from a football game, but really defeating the tyrants. And that's the epic holy grail opportunity that Donald J. Trump has right now. It's amazing. So here is a clip of Tim Allen, the man's man. Just a good, wholesome guy. Not a right winger, not a left winger. I'd love to get him on the show. We never tried, but let's try. Uh, on Fox. Just saying there is no information on Trump. Everything they say about him isn't true. You try to go find the statements, and it's always not what he said. It's taken out of context. It's twisted. And so the very people bullying everyone and uh, are the ones saying that Trump is a bully. Here it is. So, Gigi Hadid right. mocking our next first lady. Appropriate or not? I don't think it's appropriate in that venue. But again, this is a... It's a I, I'm not a spokesman for Hollywood. I'm, I'm a comedian. <laughs> right. So I, I, I get to tour around the country and I do comedy and I do a show that leans. We have a point of view. I think Your character is a conservative. Well, a point of view, but it's written by liberals. We have a liberal staff. We have conservatives. That goes without saying. That's, that's redundant. But they, we have a sense of humor about ourselves and there's a point of view and there's a, a 
place to do it. What I think is, what I find odd in Hollywood is that they didn't like Trump because he was a bully. But if you side, if you had any kind of inkling that you were for Trump, you got bullied for doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, it, it, it gets a little um, hypocritical to me, is that you, you can now bully people. And you're always on the defense with this. But mostly what I'm finding is there's no source material for, for comedians. That's it. There's no source material. There's nothing there. Bloomberg, again, on Sunday, put out a tweet. I couldn't believe it. It was just a made-up tweet saying, yeah, I ripped off 6,000 young people. Ah, I settled it. Big deal. Donald Trump, quote, tweeted. What the hell? I mean, when Donald Trump does stuff that's real, like, oh, yeah, Snowden's a traitor. Kill him. No, Trump, you're wrong. Or let him into an iPhone. Give him a warrant. It's, they want the keys to all the iPhones, Trump. I mean, you know, he's got blind spots. We all do. But there's not much there after that that isn't BS. And that's what's frustrating. Is how people run to me and go, he hates gay people. You have that. I'm like, okay, where's the quote? He did, he does. I quite frankly thought it was over the top. He was like waving an LGBT flag at the RNC and everybody had a clap saying, we've got to be nice to all the gay people now. And the Republicans are all, yay. I just thought it was like, wow, he's got conservatives doing stuff they never do. And then the left just says he hates gay people. It, it, I mean, it's the upside down level of it all that makes your head spin. I mean, if they got away with these lies, we'd really be in trouble. The lies blew up in their face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trump's trying to unify people. But first, we've got to have a country to do it. Nobody's got open borders like this. They turn it into some personal attack. I can't just move to England or Mexico and just say, I'm here to have my baby free. They'd say, you're crazy. But you can come here and do it. You can go to Germany and do it. It's, it's, it and again, they get the minorities in, they make them the majority, and they wind them up to be racist. We've got to change all that. A federal judge came out and told a bunch of bitching illegals, you know, hey, if you don't like Trump being the president, go to another country. Don't come here and bitch about it all day. I don't like go to... China and complain about their president, even though he's not even elected. What are the communist Chinese doing involved in our elections? Again, how did we get to this point? Now, speaking of bullying, we're going to go to break here in a minute. I'm going to come back and get into it. And I want to get more into these quotes from Trump. The election is getting people uninvited to Thanksgiving. Americans say the idea of talking politics Thanksgiving is stressing them out. And it just goes on from there. I personally have been noticing this, seeing it. Everybody in the office says it's happening to them. And I want to make this point. I have hired Democrats before. I have thought we could wake them up. I have family friends and long-term friends that are liberals. I'm tolerant. I just think it's kind of a joke what they believe and how they've been conned. I'm nice to them. I have had people say, I'm not coming to your Thanksgiving, even though they've come other years because of Trump. And I have had friends of the family say, I'm not coming to visit you this Christmas because we're not friends anymore. And I mean people that I've known for over a decade that have told me, I'm sorry, I can't associate with you. Thank you for letting me know what type of person you were. I was tolerating you. And yeah, this shows you're in a cult. Because you're in a cult, folks, when you don't associate with somebody because you disagree with the Republican. By the way, I've even got some people in the office freaking out over uh, the former head of the campaign, Conway, going on TV and saying, oh, Trump, you know, thinks Hillary's been through enough. He's not planning to go after her. Well, it's not the president's job to prosecute people is the attorney general he appoints, and Jeff Sessions is the number one constitutional attack dog, and that signals he's going to do the right thing and step aside politically and not be involved. Now, quite frankly, I think the Democrats are smart enough to understand something, so I'll say this. Trump doesn't want to be political. He doesn't want to violate the law, so he's stepping aside. But Trump is very justice-oriented. That means vindictive in their nomenclature. And it is my belief that he's going to step aside and let the AG and or state AGs as well go after Hillary. Now, he doesn't want to telegraph that because then what happens? Let's think, folks. 
Who gives a pardon in the 58 days he's got left? Barack Hussein Obama. And then there's a pardon for Hitlery. So they want to either let him do the pardon and force that out in the open, or regardless, they're going to go ahead with a strong AG. All Trump can do is put an AG in of high credibility and high moral standing, who always does what he says he'll do. And probably one of the most honorable people in Congress is Walter Jones or Jeff Sessions. Congressman Jones and Jeff Sessions are known for doing exactly what they say they'll do to a compulsive level like Ron Paul. I mean, it's compulsive. Because I'm the type of guy that does what I say I'm going to do, but if things really change and it's going to hurt somebody if I do what I said I'll do, I'll try to explain to them, hey, I think we should do something different. Those guys won't even argue it. They'll just do it no matter what. Very dogged is the way I would describe it. You talk about attack dogs, this is, I mean, this is it. Like a bunch of hounds going after, you know, a wolf or whatever. So it's on. It's on. And they know that. And I would expect Trump to not be sitting there poking Hillary and poking um, Obama. And, and here's the deal. I was told over a week ago by multiple sources. I talked to another source there by those. He checked. He said, yeah, no, that's dead on. Chelsea is over there. Chelsea's been meeting uh, with Trump's uh, daughter, oldest daughter, and uh, Kushner's uh, uh, wife, and is just begging, please don't indict my mommy and my daddy. And the word is then the Democrats will leave Trump alone if they win in four or eight years, and they'll do the same cover your butt program. Well, you know what? Trump doesn't need that. Trump isn't going to run a corrupt ship. Trump really runs things by the book, has top law firms certify everything. He's firing all the lobbyists right now, again, delivering on every promise. So this is a big deal. It's a big deal. You know, I said I'd get into the bullying, and we're going to do that when we start the next hour. Because all over the country, people I know, staff here, I mean, multiple crew members are not having Thanksgiving with their parents. They're not having Thanksgiving with their children. Maybe I can get some of them to actually come on air. I didn't ask one of them yesterday if he wanted to tell a story on air. And I mean, I know his parents, too. They're nice people, man, but they are flipped out. Especially one guy's mom is to the point that she didn't. I mean, I know people aren't getting out of bed, folks. We're talking almost two weeks into this, and people are in their beds. I mean, this is, this is crazy town. This is crazy town, folks. Because they really believe a guy that loves Hitler just got elected. They, they believe all the crap. And they're the minority, but they are susceptible. And I'll tell you who they mainly are. It's white people. The really weird stuff I'm getting from white people, mainly white liberals and baby boomers who just, they, they've always been the heroes their whole lives. They were fighting the right wingers. They were fighting the, you know, this and that. And they just are heroes in their minds. And they have no respect for anybody else or their views or their opinions. And I've had two different people I know who hardly ever even seen. But, you know, who are, I just invite to come over because I don't do a lot of entertaining, but I do around Christmas and other holidays. I'll have like 50 people at my house sometimes. And they're like, oh, we're not going to be coming. I'm like, all right. And then like another email, you know, because Trump, yeah, you understand, right? I'm like, oh, well, don't let the door hit you on your ass out the door. Um, I am pretty darn reclusive. And I only have people around like twice a year.